Пошли. Все вместе. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. We've got a bit of a crossover episode today. We've got the folks from Like It or Not here. That's it. That's it. What's going on, everybody? How you doing? Hi, Ben. Hi, James. Evening. Good to see both of you. Lance, hey. good yeah. to see you. I saw everybody else backstage. Mike, Dave, David, and Matt. Good to see you. DJ Exclusive. What's going on? Yeah. Man? First time DJ Exclusive has been on yeah. the show, which is know, way right? too long, but so happy to finally have you here. Yes. Thank y'all for having me. I should have been here a long time ago, but you know, it just... Takes me so long and booked and busy, just a little bit, just a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but I'm here now. I love okay. your mic. That's so cool. So I was that too. I'm like, I love yeah. it. <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm about to go do a performance somewhere. That's why I love this mic. <laughs> my roommate's microphone. I say, hey, can I use a microphone because mine is busted and disgusted right now? So let me use your mic. And the first time I used it, I was like, oh, I just want to sing. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> <Green light. laughs> it's a great light. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Rebecca will be here soon. She's getting wow. off of work. So we, we will have the full like it or not slash leftist mafia crossover episode special for episode 69. It's a big day. Oh, is that why we're doing this? Well, I didn't realize it was episode 69. I, I didn't even know this was episode 69. Hell yeah. It is. That, that's the sex. Are number. you sure? That that number references it is, the yeah. sex position. Oh uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> Mine says 68. <laughs> so. oh, oh, good man. job, Mike. Mine says 68 too. Well, that's because that's wrong. Last week was 68. <laughs> was what? it? Damn, I didn't yeah. Even know. Congratulations. Shit. Yeah. I never oh get these God. kind of things wrong. Uh, wow. Yeah. Mike is right. I got to edit my video. Good job labeling it wrong, David. No, mine last week was 67. You guys are losing viewers because you're not using no, the mine was date, all right? Everyone will come week. in because they think we're going to be talking about 69. And bring, bring them in. Bring yeah. people oh, in. Okay. <laughs> I think it was we'll talk about economic week. reform for two hours. <laughs> they'll just come in and they'll right. type Regardless. nice and then they'll leave. But that engagement is enough. Like that's all we need. It's, it's all you need. It's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. So what has happened this week? You know, uh it's been I feel like a really um another week. <laughs> I don't know. It's raining. Um I'm trying to remember what happened. There was a lot with regard to like Elon Musk and his burner account being outed. I saw Lance talk about that. Um there's discourse surrounding Sonia Sotomayor and whether or not she should retire. And liberals have some thoughts about that. Um, I thought that Mehdi Hassan wrote a really great piece uh, about that. Um, you know, it went over okay, but Senate Democrats in particular are pretty pissed off about it. So there's a lot. I don't know where you all want to start today. There's... Well, we all know Mike hates old people, so I'm sure he wants Sotomayor <laughs> <laughs> out of there. <laughs> I will say this. Uh, I'm really sympathetic to her because... In the grand scheme, like comparatively speaking, she's really not that old. Right. She's 69, like our episode. Um, hey. and, but the thing is that she does have a lot of health problems, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's not it's not exactly a one-to-one -one compared to the Ruth Bader Ginsburg situation where she was like 97 and had 84 different cancers. Like she does have health problems. She's not that old. <laughs> but I understand like Elizabeth Warren, some of the other senators are saying this is like completely unacceptable that people are calling for her to retire. But... Listen, we have to kind of, this is my thoughts on this, okay? 
Um, I don't, I don't, and look, I like Sotomayor much more than uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. But Biden could lose this election. And I don't think that the survivability of Sotomayor, like our right should hinge on the survivability of Sotomayor. So even though like I, I really do feel bad and sympathize for her, um, and I understand the argument of the people saying she shouldn't step down, I genuinely think she really should step down. And it, like, it pains me to say that, um, but it, I mean, there's so much at stake. How much have we lost within just four years? You know, uh, how much more? If there's, if the six, three majority goes seven, two, like how long is it going to take to reverse that, you know, or even listen, get back sure, to the point where there's a four, I'm, four plus a swing, you know? Uh, listen, I'm sure if she um, doesn't retire and Donald Trump wins the general election in 2024, I'm yeah. sure Trump will respect her wishes and replace her with a nice liberal job. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Just like he did with uh, RGB. He respected her wishes, of course. Yep. Yeah. We got ACB. Did That's I just say RGB? Was the, I did say. You said, I said RGB, uh, yeah. You said I, RGB. Yeah. That, that wasn't oh, that. Ruth didn't, Gator didn't, didn't, she say, <laughs> didn't she say something like that? Like, my, my one dying wish is that you, you don't replace me with, like, some hardcore right winger. Oh, did she? I, it was it was something along those lines or something along the lines of like timing of of, of the election something that she said but oh, wait until oh, it was wait until after the election request right? was donald trump they ignored it right away um mm. you know i i mike I, I have to agree with you you know it it really is a tough spot but we saw what happened with ruth bader ginsburg we saw um when these positions overall having justices for life that's a problem in the first place, right? Um, because now you're right. How do, how long will it take to turn us a, a five or rather a seven to two majority court? It would take all of our lifetimes. I mean, right now we're going to be fighting back against these Donald Trump picks probably for the rest of our lives. So if it gets even worse, you know, but unfortunately, the people who have power, they don't think that way. They have power. They want to protect power. And inevitably, it, it comes back to, to bite them in the butt. Yeah, and and just this uh, this article from uh, David Sirota that he shared, uh, really, I think it speaks to that liberal hubis, right? This was from 20, uh, 2013. Stop telling Ruth Bader Ginsburg to retire. Like, I would like to talk to that author now and ask if she still has that same position. Because, Probably, honestly. I mean, yeah. come yeah. on. I, I mean, it, we, we lost so much. Just, just within a year, they messed up so wow. much. Uh, Roe v. Wade overturned, uh, affirmative action struck down, discrimination against LGBTQ people affirmed. There's so m and there's like this is just uh, like a couple of years into this supermajority. So I just feel like we have to be overly cautious here. And I don't think that the hand wringing that we're seeing from like Senate Democrats um, is appropriate. Like at least try to empathize with the people who are making this argument because the people making this argument, um, you know, they it's coming from a good place. Like it's not being, it's not malicious. I could pull up some of the quotes from the Senate Democrats just to kind of give everyone a sense of what they I said. I bet you that, that that author still does feel the same because a lot of people view politics not as a thing that impacts society, but as like these personal achievements. Like, oh, isn't it amazing that she she uh, died while she was still serving? Like, n right. no, that like right. there's, there's a problem <laughs> with now the rest of society because she decided not to step down earlier. Like the, this, but it's it's a fundamental difference in the way certain people view politics. Yeah, and, and like I understand this argument. Like Peter Welch says, you know, she's not she's not seventy. I might remind some of my colleagues to look around, check their birth certificates, and I understand the argument. But it's a matter of like, does she, are these health issues that she's been experiencing like isn't significant enough to merit concern? Uh, you know, uh, Dick Durbin says that he wants her to remain on the court. Um, Chris Van Hollen, I think she's doing a great job. Nobody's saying she's not doing a good job, uh, but he's baffled by the chatter. Elizabeth Warren says it's nonsense. Um, where did this come from? Warren said, I don't want to add any fuel to the fire on this. I think she's doing a great job and I am grateful for her public service. It's not like like they're taking this as some sort of a personal attack against her. And I feel like that's really it's a straw man argument and they're being purposefully obtuse. Like yeah. they know why we're, we're making this argument and not me in particular. Nobody's listening to me, but like people who are significant, like Mehdi Hassan, uh, like other even notable liberals, they're making this argument because like, it's a matter of life or death for so many people, literally, if mm. she is not able to survive four more years, and I'm sure she will, right? But it's just a matter of an overabundance of cautious that we all want to exercise given the era that we're in. 
Remember, Mike, voting is strategic. That's why you have to vote for right. the better of the two evils. But apparently, um, uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice Lifetime picks, that's not strategic. They shouldn't no. st strategically retire. They shouldn't strategically plan out when they when they resent when they retire so that the you know uh, uh the the president that they want to pick their replacement is in power that of course is not strategic we'll right. we'll wag our finger that voting is strategic to the people who don't want to vote for biden but we won't do the same for the very powerful judges who have mm -hmm. lifetime appointments it's fucking amazing isn't it yeah and, and like she's gonna like we're not, and this was a point that was made by uh, one of the Daily Show hosts. Um, I don't know his name, the other white guy, but that that's not John Stewart. But he was saying like, it's not like we're gonna throw her into like a pit of fire or something. Like she gets to retire. You know what I mean? Like right. she's wealthy. She could. I would retire if I had the ability to do so as early as I could. So people are just like saying, like, hey, spend your golden years enjoying life, long walks on the beach. Uh, I don't know. Go play Fortnite. Whatever you want to do, son of my own. You don't get all those amazing <laughs> bribes and everything, though, right? Like, don't you? Don't you stand to make a lot of money when you're on the bench? From not sorry, not bribes, gifts, tons of gifts. You yeah, know, gifts. If you're Clarence Thomas, yes. Well, if, yeah, if you're Clarence exactly. Thomas. I don't think Sotomayor is doing that. <laughs> <It's an> investment. <laughs> investment plan. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a very simple guy. As long as um, you know, with Ruth Bader Ginsburg's uh, replacement, I just required that. Whoever took her place also had three names, and we got that with Amy Coney Barrett, so I was fine. And yeah. with uh, Sonia Sotomayor, as long as the next justice also shares a name with a Mortal Kombat character, I'm good. <laughs> so give me like Judge Molina, and I'm good. Just I'll be fine. Four, four syllables in the name, too. I'll take that. Weird rules, but I feel it. Judge Sub Zero. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like um, I'm trying to like... figure out which character is Sotomayor. Help, help me out. Which one is that? Yeah, it's been way Sonya. too long. Sonya Blade. Oh, Sonya Blade. Sonya Blade. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Mm. All, right, all right. Sorry. It's... I haven't <laughs> played the game in so long. Yeah. yeah Ben's a boomer. Think... Yeah, I got a game. Think... Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. Is, is there. So I have a question. Is the... Let, Let's say that spot is open. Can Republicans block? Like use any weird strategy to block the <laughs> the, yeah. the the next they can, judge they can coming stall. on because that's it, it, yeah it, they can it, stall and stall and stall that's can. the one thing I'd worry about right yeah. like that's they, what they, they still hold the right? Senate you know Democrats do hold the Senate right now and the the additional fear is like if they lose the Senate as well as the presidency you know so like what the argument is this is kind of like a small closing window where they have the Senate and they have a Democratic president to where you know you you replace Sotomayor. And then for the most part, you know, Jackson, super young. Uh, Kagan doesn't seem like she's necessarily um, unhealthy, right? Mm -hmm. So if you replace she's her- She's also the worst of the liberal justices. So she's I mean, absolutely the worst. <laughs> I wish yeah. we could keep Sotomayor. I wish they could switch <laughs> bodies or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, I hate, I hate Kagan. But yeah, it, if, if they were to do that, then you would basically solidify that three- liberal uh minority on the court and it wouldn't shrink like it's just a matter of like we're already in such a bad position um not shrink like not losing any more i think in the long term it's going to make a big difference short term not going to help us much but long term it's important like how many more rights do we have to lose we don't like we don't even know the outcome of some of these recent cases that they took up right. like are they going to get rid of the chevron um doctrine that mm -hmm. like huge implications so like it's just about like mitigating damage at this point to me. It's all strategic, and that's that's where I'm coming from. Uh, I don't, you know, it's not like I hate Sotomayor. I love old people, contrary to popular belief. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that, but I mean, I don't hate old people, right? But like, let's not let's not on. fuck ourselves over. <laughs> Mike, let me let me warn you, Mike, that old creeps up on you real fast. I know. You, know it, you will be. Old. It. You will. Be. <laughs> you will be what you hate. I am feeling it. I mean, look I at, will look hate myself. We have the gray hair coalition at the bottom. So yeah, that is right. <laughs> uh, no, it's just that, you know a lot of the old people in my family. They are like very, very. They give me a bad perception of old people. They're Republican, um, annoying, mm. um, and they're not even that old. You know what I mean? It's just. It's just people that I hate that are assholes. It's not necessarily old people. I just it's a meme that I gotta keep going. But yeah, you I don't hate Sotomayor. <laughs> you know what I, I can't help but think when you we discuss this, 
<laughs> we can't get them to be um, Lance. I love strategery. They 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 won't do any of George <laughs> Bush's strategery mm -hmm. uh, with Sotomayor. So I guess we could just forget about any chance of them actually like packing the court and yeah. actually balancing it out and mm. maneuvering in the same kind of way Republicans maneuvered over the last. I mean, they worked on it for years. They they worked on it for years. And as soon as they saw an opportunity to seize those court picks, they they did that. So I guess if we can't even get them to really think about getting someone to retire in time to prevent an even more cataclysmic <laughs> you know, court, mm -hmm. then uh, we could really forget about them doing something structural in the long run. Yeah. True. Yeah. It just it it, it kind of speaks to the mentality of Democratic Party elites at the moment. Um it just they feel entitled to these positions of power. And I like again, I get it. Like, I don't I think it feels gross to really single out Sotomayor, but the reasons are valid. You know, it's not yeah. like it's just I hate I hate her in particular. No, she is vulnerable. And it's 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 scary to see somebody have health issues and be in that position of power and could what are cost the health issues. Are they, uh, something I don't know in particular, but, okay. but she was like admitted to the hospital like a couple of months ago. Um, and look, that, every, that could happen to anyone, right? So it's not necessarily mm -hmm. just like, oh, she's old and she's dying. It's just, I don't know. It's, just it's, odd. it's a numbers game. It's the right. odd Thank game. You. We can't yeah. keep playing like this. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Like people are just worried, rightfully so, because it wasn't that long ago. When Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, right? And, and like she only had to make it a couple more months, but she couldn't because guess what? When nature calls, nature calls. You can't fight that, right? It's the right. force of nature. That's not what I think about when we say nature calls. But no. <laughs> <laughs> I remember where I was. When she died, man. I, re I remember. And it's, it's what's crazy to me is that that moment is actually still very present for me. Yeah. I remember when she died and I'm like, oh, my God, we're getting ready to go to Handmaid's Tale because I knew <laughs> that they were going to seize that moment and do exactly what they did. And, uh, and, 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 and here we are, you know, again, like we're just talking about the numbers game, but it, it repeats itself. If they don't learn their lesson, history most certainly is going to repeat itself. Yeah, it was it, it was bizarre to see all like the um what when she died to see all like the eulogies and the obituaries that were like uh, heralding her as a feminist icon and it's like mm. she's her she's her decisions are literally going to be the cause of the dismantling of Roe v Wade which we which is what we saw yeah. so like yeah. it was so amazing to watch like yes you can say this about her but at the end of the day the decision she made at the end of her career career to me will define her going forward for for right. good i mean this is her legacy mm. unfortunately for for anyone who loves her so much yeah i got the mentality that i, I understand the mentality in washington dc now it's like how dare you try to interrupt my episode of west wing how, how dare you try to interrupt my episode of Madam, Madam Secretary? Like, this was about me. Sorry, RGB, love you, mean it. But, like, they didn't want anybody to mess up the perfect ending where she was supposed to die in office and everything was supposed to work out perfectly. Um, and, and I think the people surrounding them really think we should not have the nerve, the, the, the audacity of us to interrupt their, their, uh, their life story. Yeah, yeah th that's exactly it. And I'm I'm remembering like uh, pre vaccine COVID era. Like I think this was a couple of months into the pandemic, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg was marrying couples without a mask. Like mm -hmm. I saw the pictures, and I was just like, "What is she doing?" I mean, are, are we really gonna? I, like she was outside, right? But she was very close with them. And I'm just like, "Listen, put this lady in a bubble or some shit." Like, what, what, what exactly is going on here? Are we just like rolling the dice with the fate here? Uh, and she did. You know what I mean? It's not like she was, uh, she was healthy already. So it's just like, it just feels so frustrating because we're so powerless in this situation, right? We're we're hoping and crossing our fingers that people in power be strategic and they don't like risk our rights for their own careers. Uh, and I guess that's too much to ask. It's offensive to some people. It's, it's preposterous to some yeah. Senate Democrats. Uh, and it's, again, it's not like I don't understand where they're coming from with regard to Sotomayor because it's a different situation than with Ruth, but it's still dire and I'm still worried and I don't want more uh, conservatives to be packed. I mean, seven, two, 
seven two at this point, just like throw away the country. Like that's just never gonna happen. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this this is but this is gonna be a long fight. Yeah. Every person on the screen is gonna have gray hairs by the time we're done getting this court back. <laughs> <in order>. Yeah. <laughs> over time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's sorry to start off on a doomer, but that was something that was on my mind and I didn't get to talk about that this week in a video. Um, and yeah, I just kind of feel I feel annoyed by liberals who are like finger wagging. Well, there's also that kind of like entire craven thing about like people saying you can't appoint someone in an election year right before an election. And then uh, I, I thought that was just the rule because of how it was treated during the Obama era. And then when Trump came into power, it was like, no, you can do whatever you want. You yeah, you, you can, you can just, you can just do whatever you want, really. Just it's, yeah. it's all about politeness, about whether or not you're willing to. You're go right. Yeah. Mitch McConnell made up that role and then got rid of yeah. it. Yeah, and everyone <laughs> believed it. You know, yeah. even even liberals were like, "Ah, oh, he's probably right. You can't do this in an election year, Obama. You gotta <laughs> yeah. wait. You gotta wait. You know." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're actually debating it like 50 50 Yeah, I was, was like, insane. "Why are you entertaining this?" Wait. Because they Trump entertain you can any just do that. any any absolute bullshit Republicans bring up, they will entertain it. And all of a sudden, it would like normalize the conversation as opposed to just outright being like, are you fucking crazy? Like they, they yeah. should they should have anything that the Republicans bring up. They should treat it like they're from fucking space. Like, what are you fucking talking about? But no, they, they have to like, oh, well, let me think about that. Or even if they reject it, they'll do it like kindly. Like, no, call them fucking insane and like make it clear how fucking crazy these people are. And they're terrible at doing that. Yeah. Didn't Obama have like six to six or seven months too? Like, what wasn't yes. it an even bigger yeah. window than Trump had? Yeah, Trump it was like had like two months or something. And there was yeah. like, ah, fuck it. It was like a care. year. <laughs> yeah, like half a year. Yeah. And insane. he chose Merrick Garland. Merrick as Garland. Way, as an yeah. olive branch. Mm. Mike as an olive branch. branch. So, so yeah. the Republicans will see how reasonable he is. Because after, <laughs> after eight years, he didn't fucking clue in to the fact that they're not reasonable people. No. It's, it's, it's all, <laughs> the shit is so insane to me. That they still at the, at the end of his term, he still tried to like reach out. We almost like, got, we almost got we almost insane. got social security cut because Obama was trying to reach out to. Um, right. yeah. Don't forget, he oh wanted this this grand bargain with Republicans so he could show he was Mister Bipartisan and he was ready to put mm -hmm. social security and Medicare and all these things on the table. And if Republicans actually wanted that stuff more yeah. than they hated the first black president, they would have got it. That's but at I the end of the think. day. <laughs> Republicans ended up blocking that, right? Yeah, that's they blocked. Yeah, they just didn't want. They didn't want to give. They hated Obama so much. They, they didn't Obama want to so give Obama insane. that that quote unquote win, win. where he yeah. would get the credit for doing what they always wanted to do. Oh my <laughs> the thing they wanted all their lives. <laughs> See, right. that's the model, though. Right? I, like, I, if if Democrats don't know this by now, they all need to be tarred and feathered because <laughs> Republicans only have one rule: opposition. Period. It yeah. doesn't matter. They have no belief system. Whatever. But look, look at how they played the fence. They they started. To yeah, the border on the fence with with Gaza. I started mm -hmm. seeing some oh, conservatives yeah. start saying sympathetic things about Gaza. But then as soon as Joe Biden actually made up his mind to kind of say, okay, ceasefire, kind of, sorta, then Republicans found their voice and they said, okay, we could be in opposition. It doesn't matter. The Heritage Foundation. They came up with Obamacare, Romney Care. Soon as Obama came up with it, opposition. They have no principles; they just oppose. Yeah, as Ole said, uh, she put it best. I'm going to paraphrase. She said something to the effect of, "Like, yeah, their position is uh, fuck you. That's it. Like, it doesn't yeah. matter. If they said this five months ago. <laughs> it's fuck only you. The lips. Okay. That's it. Yeah, it's literally like it, it sounds like an oversimplification, but that literally <laughs> is their ethos. Like, if you don't have to look deeper, analyze them, and figure out what their motivations are, it's just fuck you, right? <laughs> it's, it's what they and look the how border. effective what's it most is. Inter yeah. What's most interesting is we're now seeing this do that same thing to themselves that's right because mm -hmm. of that arizona abortion law yes uh that decision that was just made where the supreme court in arizona upheld this 1868 or some year like that where basically <laughs> all forms of abortion in arizona are illegal except if the life of the mother is in danger and you know what that means that it actually has to get to the point where like she's gonna fucking die before a doctor will be right. like oh okay right. i'm safe to do this and i won't go to jail for trying to save her earlier when i actually could have saved her and she's probably gonna die anyway now um but what you're seeing now you're seeing carrie lake 
who when she was running for governor all the way back in what was it 10 20 30 2022 um she was saying that oh that law is great i can't wait for it to be the law of the land in arizona and now that it's the law in the land of arizona she's going oh that's too far we've gone too far <laughs> trump is out there going oh arizona i played a video the other day where he goes um where he says um uh, oh, you know, that that went too far, but don't worry. The governor of Arizona will take care of it and fix it. The governor of Arizona, of Arizona is the Democrat who beat Carrie Lake. <laughs> so Trump's saying, oh, don't worry about the abortion law that just passed in Arizona completely because of me, my doing because the democratic governor in arizona who defeated the candidate i endorsed who supported that law she'll take care of it and make sure that no one gets you know in trouble for it like i'm seeing online um republicans like the pro-life news website or whatever you could find like tweets to them like proudly going like oh the uh, uh, i did that when it comes to roe v wade being repealed and then you say to them to the arizona thing yeah, you did that. And they go, no, no, we didn't. That's not what we wanted. No, yeah, no, <laughs> I mean, it is. To be clear, they though, Trump fucking is own this. His... And people need to He's... remind them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. This is what <laughs> they, they wanted. This is what they got because they wanted it. Mm, the idea yeah. that they're but trying you... to run from it, the thing they always wanted is insane. Yeah. yeah, but to be clear, the thing with Trump, he's he's changing his tune for an electoral strategy right now, right? Like That's the whole reason he's coming forward and saying that, like, I'd states' rights, I'd, I actually, we don't want to do a blanket ban on abortion. We're going to leave it up to each of the states. He's only going Reagan with this because they know how deeply unpopular it'll be for the next election. If he keeps pushing the Lindsey yeah. Graham line, you know, that's so that's that's the reason he's softening on that issue. Yeah, I think oh, that yeah, this is a losing battle for Republicans. If they, they I say put this on the ballot in all 50 states, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. get it out there. Let people know exactly who supports it and what's on on the line here. Get them out to vote. Mm -hmm. it, it speaks to how deceitful they've been, though, right? Because now the line from so many conservatives is, listen, I understand I'm still pro-life, but we've got to win these elections, which kind of goes to show you they never thought that it was murder in the first place, right? Because you don't treat what you think is mass murder like that, right? Like we see how people respond to murder on the Democratic Party side. They're leveraging their votes against Joe Biden. They're voting uncommitted. They're not just saying, well, you know, Donald Trump has to win this election or, or Biden has to win this election. Like on, on the Trump side, you see so many conservatives saying, well, you know, I get it. Trump has to win this election. Uh, it's, it's bizarre. And then what's so contradictory is that Trump will say, like he released this video on Truth Social saying, yeah, you know, I take credit for Roe v. Wade, and uh, we're actually the moderates, uh, but I wouldn't sign a federal abortion ban, and Democrats support aborting babies after they're born. So he makes up these lies, but then he says, and I support states' rights on this issue. But it's like, well, hang on a second, though. So you support, like, you make up this lie, and then you say, that's okay, I support that, actually. I support states doing that. You wouldn't respond to murder that way if you actually thought it was murder. So they're giving away the game. They're showing all of their cards here. And I just love the tap dance that they're doing. Like the statement that Carrie Lake released, I don't know if you all saw it. It was so hilarious to me because she's like, I will be against a federal abortion ban, but against federal funds for abortion. And I support states' rights, but not this state right in particular. It's just so wild to me because they don't know what to do. And there's so many receipts from just a couple of years ago. So like they're kind of backed into a corner and they can't come out of it because they made they made this bed for themselves and they're lying, you know, in it now. It's like the dog catching the car. They don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Anything else on, on that issue before we talk about OJ? Porn <laughs> dog. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Was such a such a weird story. I was not expecting that. OJ. Yeah, I like I didn't know he was sick. Me either. I, yeah, yeah. The last. I'm not even sure what there's to say on it. I mean, he, yeah, he yeah, died of cancer. Yeah. The, the, the yeah. only thing that that I'll ever remember about OJ, I mean, apart from the obvious, is just that being in. I think I was in grade five, and for mm. some reason, we were listening to the verdict on the radio. Like, that's not. I feel <laughs> like was my school. I feel like that's <laughs> not a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and apparently, that's a very common uh, uh, thing that's ha that happened. 
I feel like that's weird. Like <laughs> playing the verdict it was, for it was a it was for major, children. Like it was, it was a major moment in history. Like we we were watching it. The entire school. We, I was in high school. The entire school was watching, waiting for the verdict. And when he got found not guilty, we you know I was in the blackest neighborhood of South Florida. Man, we all <laughs> came running out, cheering at the top of our lungs, celebrating. We thought we won the Super Bowl. Man. Yeah, of course, doing the saying, "If it doesn't fit, you must acquit." <laughs> and, you know, and and and, and um, there was a, um, um, attorney Darden, I think his name. Um, uh -huh. He was a, one of the prosecutors, and he wrote. He wrote about it again after um, George, not George, George Zimmerman. After George Zimmerman got away with murdering Trayvon Martin, um, attorney Darden wrote about how a lot of people celebrated when OJ got off and that was misplaced. But it was like when you look at the injustices that came afterwards, um, it was just really, really interesting how he, he put it like that. But it was a milestone, though. So, if you guys were watching it in fifth grade, that means we're just a little bit older than you. We were watching it in, in high school and people yeah. were watching it in colleges. It was it was everywhere when they came down with that verdict. Yeah, I was in fourth grade. And yeah, I remember the teachers busting out the TV on the rolling car and everyone was watching it. And it was weird because like the kids were like, I was talking with my friends and the teachers were like, shh, shh. like everybody was just like glued <laughs> to the TV. And I like I didn't really understand why I was in fourth grade. Like I did not have the attention span. And like, you know, there were I remember a conversation with, you know, kids at the table. One girl was like, I think that he's not guilty. And then another kid was like, no, he's definitely guilty. And I, like I'm in fourth grade. I'm like, I don't know what those words mean. Like, what is guilty? Not guilty? I don't know. Like, I'm completely tuned out. I just remember the reactions and being deeply bored, bored uh, by it because it's like deeply you know, bored. Yeah, I was deeply bored. I'm just like, why are we watching this? Can I like read my Goosebumps book or some shit? Like, I don't right. understand. I'm, I'm in fourth grade. I'm eight. It's also how we got the Kardashians, if I'm not mistaken. I, right? somebody, I just That's saw true. somebody in the chat say that. Can, can, you, the can you explain that? How 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 did that oh, happen? They're, they're, they're I, I don't know how lawyer. it happened, but yeah. I just know. Was that. Dad, what was it? Not, their dad was his lawyer. Name. Yeah, yeah, it was one of the lawyers okay. for the case. Excuse me, y'all. I just want to be clear. Kim Kardashian's dad is not Johnny Cochran. No, <laughs> there's another lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember they showed videos of Kim and everybody being there at the trial doing the case and everything. I'm like, oh my gosh, they yeah. look like regular people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that was. Uh, I don't. I don't think we uh, put on, put it on the radio. If I recall, I can't recall really. I don't remember how old I was then. Yeah, I got. I guess I'm Mike's age, right? How old are you, got, Mike? Thirty-seven. All right. Yeah. So I was probably in fourth. I will be thirty-seven. I, I shouldn't over over I, age I do myself. remember. I do remember the uh, I, I being home when the uh, when the 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 Bronco uh, mm -hmm. chase was on. Mm -hmm. um, it was the NBA Finals that night. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 I remember, yeah. I remember the finals. Yeah. It was the only time in history where during the NBA finals, they actually had to do a picture in picture and show the Bronco chase in the corner and start like cutting Let's in and out of the ride. audio between the actual live oh. finals and the chase. Yeah. Damn. So I think wow. nobody remembers the space shuttle Challenger blowing up. Y'all, y'all. That know. happened the same day? No, 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 like no. Years, no. Like yeah. ten years, it was like eighty six, wasn't it? It was like eighty six, like a decade before it. Yeah. Like, Wait, what? No, it, was, it was about five years before that. Some, something, anyway. But yeah, no, you guys are too young. That's all I'm saying. You guys, yeah, you know, I remember. Yeah, I know you see that. Yeah. That was yeah. from uh, yeah. uh, Generation X. Or I do remember nine eleven. Well, I hope so. Well, I, I mean, that was later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you have been like 19 or something? No, yeah, Lance, the, the I was, I was the like 14, okay? The Challenger exploded eight years before the Bronco chase. So I mean, 86, yeah, that's what I thought. 86, 86. okay. <laughs> It was the year I was born. Was the Challenger explosion? Oh wow! <laughs> wow! Yeah. I mean, I was only six, but I, I remember. I remember. Yeah. Damn, I was eight years old in, and I remember watching that in school too. Like I remember being in oh. class because they had it on TV, and it was just something amazing to remember. When it exploded, it was just like, wait, is something wrong? Is that supposed to happen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of confusion going on around the time. A lot of confusion. Wait, okay. What about what about Waco, Texas? Did anybody remember watching that? In oh school? Jesus, I didn't. 
Oh, man. I don't man. think we watched that. Oh, no, man. I think that was My too, gosh, man. Probably too... Uh, <laughs> too scary to show us in terms of like that was 93 age. i feel like there were a lot of these like really <laughs> tragic mass events that brought like people like whether you're children or like <laughs> whether like you're adults <laughs> together that yeah, don't yeah. as far as i can tell don't really happen the same way anymore like i can't really put like you know, unless you know maybe trump getting elected but but that's an election <laughs> like just but just random events like that that happened seemingly every couple of years <laughs> don't right around the night. really seem it to was. happen the same I mean, way COVID, covid kind of you know yeah affected everybody yeah else. i get it's but yeah it's still happening not, not really not really yeah, televised yeah, the same yeah, way, yeah. Though. <laughs> you can't really televise <laughs> it's like, I'm not COVID, like you televise wake up i've divided my life into two different uh segments uh pre-covid and post-covid yeah i feel like as crazy as things were pre-covid things got even crazier post-covid post like you could you could probably do this like pre 9-11 post 9-11 but for me it's mostly it's like same with october 7th actually that's true yeah there's just there's yeah. been a lot too of many change. huge world-changing events for millennials right like yeah. that's not to say it's like the worst history ever but like just how many economic crashes how many massive like uh geopolitical events yep. um Chet instigated Haynes. by our governments yeah so much happened uh just within the span of like 20 years too much too much. Too much. Yeah. Yeah. Too bad there's no positive like big events that happen. <laughs> that can bring us all <laughs> Not together. a one. Can we name one? <laughs> it, I feel like one good thing has happened to humanity. Come on, folks. <laughs> um I mean the, the fact that we're all still here, I guess that's a positive thing. I don't <laughs> that's probably about the only thing, huh? <laughs> I you know what I'll say? The <laughs> widespread adoption. That? Well, this one is kind of negative. I would say the widespread adoption oh, of no. the internet. But there's been a lot of bad yeah. that, that came with that too, I will say. Like we have unlimited access to information, theoretically, but people have chosen to just go in their little conspiratorial corners and racist Nazi corners and mm. kind of, you know harbor away with with those views or harbor those views i should say but um mm. who remembers the internet before corporate takeover oh, uh, oh I, it was, I i i, I yeah. remember pre internet yeah what a time oh yeah oh, before Lord, social media i feel like social media yes. changed oh, the my internet gosh. Uh, yes yeah. it did i remember yeah. corporations didn't know what to do with the internet and it was like yes stay away little mm -hmm. did i know it's the wild wild west i remember me and my friend we'd go to the library um before my family had internet and we would use the computers there and we would just yep. go on the cbs.com survivor chat rooms and just troll people there like <laughs> for like for no re like we were i don't know how we were like 10 years old just posting the dumbest shit like fart <laughs> burp and then at, like trying to direct message other users and ask them uh, to marry us and we just laughed hysterically <laughs> like it was the funniest shit in the world so that's like Time my first kind of memories of the internet me being a dipshit <laughs> online <laughs> Mine is looking that's up video crazy. game codes. That was that was my early yes, internet days. Yes, David. Oh. <laughs> that's pretty much what I, I used the internet for. Uh, mine yeah. was just, just getting the AOL CDs. They used to come in the mail oh, every mm -hmm. week. So oh, it was like, yeah. <laughs> use the access code and then blocking the internet, the, the phone connection whenever somebody's trying to use the phone. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Who got you cut off the internet? I'm so old. Oh, <laughs> My JPEGs. They were, I almost saw boom. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, I remember that too. And if somebody was on the phone, you could actually listen to their conversation when it was dialing in. I remember my sister was on the phone with her boyfriend oh, yes, and I kept right. trying to get online and so she could hear oh, the yeah. dialing. So she knew that I was trying to get on, but she was like, oh no, Mike's trying to get on. He, he's going to be pissed at me. I said he could use the computer. And then he, and then her boyfriend was like, oh, who gives a shit? And I'm like, that fucking ass. Like I was listening to all of this shit. <laughs> so it's coming through my speakers. <laughs> Wait, that was coming from the modem? You could hear it through? Like, you could yeah, hear it. talking about you when could. someone else was calling. No, he's talking about two calls, not. Oh, okay. You couldn't hear well, like people. when you when you do the like the the dial tone, like the weird AOL sound, like when it's dialing the internet. If somebody's on the phone, you can actually hear that conversation. Yeah, it would come through. That's what I heard. All <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, so it you know that could be really incriminating depending on what you're talking about. But I just heard yeah. them shit talking me. <laughs> <laughs>
I remember Napster so scared my grandma that she thought like magic was real when I was like, name me any song, any song you want, and I will have it in a couple hours, like oh, two wow. two hours. Couple long. hours, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I speak the internet. What's that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Man, I any song, and any song, but Gin and Juice by Snoop Dogg, because he would always get that weird pop punk ska version of it whenever he would yeah. try to download it. <laughs> It was actually pretty good cover, but it was, I mean, it, it's not it, was, the original. it was a good cover. That's weird. I know yes, LimeWire was mine. I saw somebody in the chat talk about LimeWire. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to DJ using LimeWire a lot. That's where I get all my music from. It gets all kind of exclusives. Computer full of viruses. Yep. <laughs> 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 I used to use. I think Morpheus uh, was was one that was. Oh, real yeah. Morpheus for a while too. Was yeah. Morpheus yeah. and Kazaa, Kazaa, Napster, Kazaa. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was the golden age. That was before oh, everyone just paid it for was. streaming services. Now you for play all your songs yeah. via Winamp. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> cool visualizer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh man! Whenever there'd be a real player player. file, you'd be like, "What the fuck? Why did I got to use this terrible software?" Real player. (laughs) (laughs) That was life was so much more uncomplicated back then. I I never thought I'd get to the point where I'm like, back in my day, but (laughs) back back up internet. (laughs) Back before high speed, before DSL, (laughs) we had peace and prosperity. (laughs) I have to worry about none of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> George Bush was president. Everything was great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fred was 99 cents alone. Well, I was on I was on the uh the internet back when Bill Clinton was president. So yes, I was connected same. Bill Clinton oh. to uh the internet in terms of like the era, I should say. Not that Bill Clinton mm. and the internet have anything to do with each other. I'm talking about the era. But like in the late nineties when like yeah. pro wrestling was at its peak with the attitude oh, era. I was doing like the the E federations, the role playing as a wrestler, and uh, we were doing like uh, the WWE like live chat quizzes and stuff like that. That was fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were some old wrestling. I forget the names of them now, but there were some old wrestling sites he used to go to, and they had basically the one wrestling dot com. Was that one of them? Uh, for me, like the, the internet was all it was video games and wrestling. That was like pretty much what I used before. Now. <laughs> I remember yeah, one line about your porn. <laughs> Mostly video games. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I only use it for video games. Just video games. <laughs> Just video games. That was awesome. I was a good boy. Liar. So a yeah, I, I was good for a couple of years until the internet corrupted me. My first, like when we first got like our computer, I was like 17. And so I could pay for internet when I got a job. And I bought my sister's old computer. And like when everybody went to bed, the first thing I looked up was, how to not be gay, and I was trying to find like oh. conversion therapy oh, camps. That's oh man, you know, is that, is that something that all gay people look up? Because I know I think I looked it up as well, too. right? Oh, no. I remember like it starts with like, Am I gay? and then you find out, No, this it's totally normal for men to be attracted to other men. I'm like, Oh, thank god, okay, it's normal. All straight guys want to broke my heart, awesome. Mike. Oh, that's it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, probably more incriminating than porn. Um, Uh as as a young man, as a young man, you know. But yeah, that that was my like spiciest uh search history. But wait, it sounds like it had a happy ending. Like it didn't actually make you hate yourself more. It made you realize you were normal, which is oh, that was the start of a very long uh period. Yeah, uh, (laughs) of like okay, so I got to try these things to uh fight it. Because um, conversion therapy was uh, like I think it was costly and it was also really hard to do it inconspicuously because I didn't want my my family to be like, oh, why does he want to go to conversion therapy? You know what I mean? Um, so like there was there were like these methods that you can light try. Bulb entrances <laughs> like a big yeah. sign that said feeling gay. gay enter come here. here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like that. So my I I did the at home methods where it's like okay if you feel a same sex attraction put a rubber band on your wrist and then like hit yourself with it so that way you associate that attraction with pain and wow. I'm like okay this is and like for two days I'm like this is really working uh, and I'm like okay it's not working okay. 
what's the so i would like try to do like at home uh methods it was like it was like gay conversion homeopathy right <laughs> that's so messed up <laughs> yeah yeah. Why did you make me laugh? I'm like, I'm torn on the inside, but then you said <laughs> gay conversion home. <laughs> it's like the ginger ale version. It's like, uh, our grandma was told us to get some ginger ale that fixed anything. You feeling gay? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it is genuinely funny because like the way that I when I finally stopped fighting it was because I was watching uh Mind of Mencia. I was watching Carlos Mencia. Mm. That was after Chappelle's show had ended. And so he became my new favorite because I was desperate for Chappelle. Um, and then he had this weird segment. He was singing a dumbass song. And he was like, um, if you think you might be gay, then you're gay. And I was listening <laughs> to that. And I was like triggered. I'm like, that's such bullshit. It's, it's not that simple. And I'm like, wait. Is it that simple? I'm like, oh no. Oh I gotta no. Say, like, this is the first time I've ever heard anyone say something good about Carlos Mencia. I was gonna say it. <laughs> Carlos Mencia <laughs> made you realize you're gay. Like unironically, <laughs> yeah. So I gotta say, he put it into the most simplistic terms to where like my 19-year-old brain was like, Oh, I've been, maybe I've been overthinking it. But yeah, yeah. And knowing what I know about Carlos Mencia, he probably stole that from somebody else. And somebody probably. Else probably else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad he did, though. Because <laughs> I heard it. One person. It saved your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Do we want to play this clip that uh, I've been laughing at since I saw it? From uh, you guys probably saw it. Jesse Waters oh, on like the that. Valuetainment podcast. Oh, yes, yeah. please. Do you have I it? dropped it in the uh, chat for whoever it. can uh, screen share it. Because this uh, trick, uh, uh, this this clip was so triggering, but yet so so like funny at the same time, just because he's so goddamn stupid. <laughs> oh, oh yes. the minimum wage one. Yeah. If you're making $20 an hour to work at a fast food restaurant, right? Is that is that six figures? Are you making six? No, no, no. 40, 40 grand. 50, 40 grand. 50 is just to exit <laughs> to and out a few zeros. Yeah. Okay, so. 40K a year. Okay, full time. 40K a year. Yeah. So, and then if your husband or wife is also there, you're making $100,000 as a family. Sure. Both working at McDonald's? 80 yes. grand. <laughs> how, how did he screw that up twice? <laughs> he, got the math, he got the math you know completely like, wrong twice within like five seconds. Like there's so much ridiculous here though. Like, yes, it's ridiculous that he heard, he thought $20 per hour times 40 hours a week equals six figures. That's insane yeah. to believe yeah. that. Um, second of all, obviously he doesn't know math because he couldn't do 40,000 plus four, you know, 40 plus 40, 40,000. Four 40, plus 000. four. But then <laughs> to me, like a, a completely, like a completely like overlooked thing here is he's, his point he's trying to make is that you shouldn't be making six figures while working at McDonald's. I think you should, but he yeah. thinks yeah. you shouldn't. But once he realizes that his point is ludicrous because nobody's making that amount, he goes to this absolutely ridiculous scenario where, where, oh, you know, if you're working at McDonald's, and then of course your partner is obviously also working <laughs> with you at McDonald's too. I mean, what, what, what is like? That's is there are there couples that work together at the same restaurant or fast food place? I'm sure there is. Is it like the norm? No. <laughs> Like what, like who, like who goes like, oh, I'm going to get a job at McDonald's. That'll be around $40,000 a year, but don't worry. I'll just double it. Cause my wife is obviously going to also be working with me. <laughs> She's work with my me. first <laughs> managers at McDonald's was a husband and wife team. So there you go. Actually. Oh, wow. No, I can see manager like though. So he had the hire, they had the, one of them had the hiring power, yeah. you know, they can make it happen. That's true. <laughs> that is okay. That's crazy. That is crazy because that job really doesn't require much. So it's inflating the entire, mm -hmm. you know, uh, labor what? sector. And, and the Happy Meal. And the Happy Meal. Unhappy, which, very which, unhappy. Which I'm very unhappy about. But it's so it's ironic so, because he makes $5 million per year to talk. Oh, it, it, like, that doesn't require anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no skill he can't, whatsoever. He can't do four plus four. Like that. It's <laughs> right. fucking stupid. But making idiot. how much money a year? Five million. Five million. Year, man, get the hell out of here. Right? Wow. <laughs> but, so, wow. but somebody who works at McDonald's 
uh, all day on their feet, deals with terrible people, horrible customers who mm. like bitch and complain about the dumbest things. You forgot my pickles. I hope you die. They don't deserve a living wage. Like it's just you can tell like this just oozes entitlement and he's never ever ever worked in the service industry not a single day in his life because and i hate the idea that like oh uh you know doing nothing or it's a skillless job anyone who's ever worked a service industry job knows that to be good at it like to actually like do the job good it, it takes tremendous skill especially in fast patience. food patience to, is the word patience mm -hmm. Um, yeah. The ability to deal, be be personal and deal with people. Escalate. The ability to deal with people yeah, who exactly. are treating yeah, you like garbage constantly. without <laughs> giving it back to them the same way. And then also, it takes skill to make that food good, accurately, to the customized order, yeah. and do it quickly, too. Like, these people are dealing with, like, yeah. like, hundreds of orders per, like, hour. Mm -hmm. And they got to get it out there. Customize to each order to each customer. It's got to taste exactly how it's supposed to taste, which means no fucking up a single thing about how long it gets, you know, heated up for or what goes with what. It takes skill to do it good and quickly. I'm sorry. Yeah. And there's constant... I, I put a lot of burgers together in my day. So yeah, so let me. I, I worked for Steak and Shake in college, and we worked the overnight shift. It was like three or four of us. And we would walk from campus to the steak and shake is only like a mile or two away. So we would walk every night and, and work at this steak and shake. And when I tell y'all never again, well, I mm. think we worked for maybe, I maybe made in a month. My roommate stayed for a while, but I made it a month. And after a while, I'm just like, just dealing with people attitudes yes. and everything. Mm -hmm. I just can't do it. I cannot do it. But I Is will that exactly say what a few it sounds like? To, yes. Like steak, but the state is steaks and shakes. Like I, we yeah, don't have that in Canada. Steak. You're like steak. Oh, really, Lance? Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. So we don't have steak it. Steak and shake yeah. is really good. It's like steak burgers, I guess you can say that. Like uh, okay, okay. down. Yeah, like it's like a hamburger burger. place, right? Yes. Then they it's make a milk shakes. Yeah. yeah. Just, but I will say this: that a few people got special milkshakes, and just <gasps> like <you> know, <laughs> staring right and fell on the floor, and gonna pop Look, that shit yeah. right on top of it. Not not gonna, let me tell you, like it takes, always treat your service workers right. <laughs> yes, yeah. up with the food. exactly. Why don't people realize this? Yeah, and I gotta say, it <laughs> also so takes skill to uh, give them those special shakes without them noticing. <laughs> Listen, yeah. nothing wrong. I'm not gonna send it back because I'm no. I'm not gonna aggravate anybody on staff. No, it's fine. Just Same. Bring it to me the way it is. I'm good. And Jesse Waters that. should be afraid now of going to McDonald's. That's yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. He definitely should. <laughs> he should fear every order. Fast yeah. food also, worker. Like, remember his these, face. These, yeah. these service workers, like especially like the fast food industry, like they literally run the productivity of all these businesses yeah that you know right. think about like manhattan midtown manhattan all, all these offices coming right. out for lunchtime between like 11 and like three where are a lot of people going they're going to mcdonald's they're going to burger king they're going to wendy's they're going to that taco bell these I know. service industry workers <laughs> feed the people who go back to their offices and do everything they need to do productivity wise to make all this money for all the corporations. Mm -hmm. So give me a break that these service industry workers aren't worth $20 at least. Yeah, but did you see that In-N-Out yeah. burger went up by ten cents? The hamburger oh. it was three fifty oh, to three sixty. Oh no! Yeah, the five yeah. cent raise on yeah. the French fries is what took me out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Are you?" And they posted it like this is an like atrocity. Let's yeah. go to war. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It, I hate has so much how people look down on people in the service industry, fast food retail. I like one thing that is still till this day it pisses me off. I was pushing carts at Walmart when I was working there, and I heard this woman under her breath tell her kid, "That's why you go to college. That's why you go to college." Oh. Like she didn't intend for me wow. to hear, so it's not like she was talking shit to me. But I heard it, and it's like I had a college degree. I wasn't. I was getting my master's <laughs> at that point. I couldn't find a fucking job. That's why I'm here. <laughs> And that, you like, you should have, you should have, if you heard, you heard that when she said it, you should have been like, oh, excuse me, ma'am, just to point out, oh, I went to college, and then you should have looked directly at the kid and been like, this is where you'll be very soon. After <laughs> <laughs> paying all your damn money, degrees. this is exactly where well, you'll be. <laughs> and you'd also find people that were like very patronizing. They, like I, because I, I worked from uh, Blockbuster Subway in the same little uh, mall area, and then I worked at Walmart, and then one lady who was really sweet, she's like. Hey, you're not going to be working in like she saw me at Walmart after she's like you're not going to be working in retail forever, right? 
I'm like, yeah, I, I can't, I can't find a job. But like, if I were, that's not a bad thing. Like, it doesn't necessarily right. mean that you're inferior if you're work like, it's a job. The right. bad thing is that you're not getting paid enough and that you're getting treated yeah. like shit. Yeah, that's it. Hey, hey. Rebecca. Hey. Hey. Oh, What'd you say? <laughs> Rebecca, I don't Hi, know guys. if you've met Ben and DJ Exclusive. <laughs> Listen, welcome everybody to like it or not. Well, we're free to tell you. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> not, my, not my crew being with my crew. I think it's so adorable. I love it. I love it, I love it so much. What y'all here you talking been, about? Rebecca? I've been okay. I've been fine. Um, working and they trying to, I don't know what y'all talking about, but I know they're trying to get me to come back into the office full time. Ooh. And mm. yeah, that sucks. So I've been dealing with those type of things, but it's all right. Like, you know, we all right. We're still here. So, you know, until that time does come, but you know, that's what I've been dealing with at work. So I've been going back and forth with them about that. But other than that, I've been, I've been good. How you guys been? Good. Good. Okay. So you're saying everyone's to go uh, subscribe and support your channel, uh, hit up your Venmo, make sure that never has to happen. It's mm -hmm. up to you watching yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a Patreon, Absolutely. Rebecca? I don't. I don't have a Patreon, but oh. I do have Cash App. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have a Patreon. But I do Not have far. Cash App. It's Becca's Voice from Rebecca's or at gmail.com for PayPal. Listen, get your girl. We always say free us because free us, we please. still got to do nine to fives <laughs> and hold it down in the background. So, you know, it's all good, though. You know, you have to ramp up the effort to have you go full time. Mm -hmm. So so I can give you guys more so I can push out more stuff, more media, more, you know, like clips, you know, have more conversations, have time to be on um, shows like, you know, those things. If I go into the office, that's going to prevent me um, to that's going to prevent it all. Like, I can't do a thing because then yeah. you know how when you go into the office, you got to wake up two hours before yeah. and you know i like to be cute so then i have to get myself together because i got to go into the what they call they call the building the green monster right mm. uh, for this mm. financial institution because when you go in there you're like you try to be like okay i'm gonna take on the day and sometimes you can't even leave for lunch because if you do that you won't make it in time back to your desk. And if you're a couple of minutes, they don't, they give you about five minute grace period. Um, but there's, I mean, we live in Atlanta, there's traffic, you know, by the time you leave and come back. So you don't leave the building. You don't even know if it rained that day. You don't know. People literally, mm -hmm. you can see them walking around to do their workouts because they never get to work out. Um, so you basically live in there. And mm -hmm. so when you leave, you just feel so drained. So they call it the green monster because it sucks you in um, mm -hmm. when, when you get in there. So, mm -hmm. but that ain't going to be my story. You okay? We just going to have not, to yeah. be confident. That's that ain't going to be ministry. my story. Right. It ain't my ministry. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, okay. What we're, you guys are talking about though? Let's, let's, we're not going to yeah. bring it down. Let's get it up. What, what were you guys talking about before I got We were home? talking about minimum wage talking. and how oh, minimum wage so apparently is making the cost of hamburgers in California be 10 cents more and stuff like that. Oh. And just destroying civilization. That, oh. that kind of thing. Yeah. And we were siding yeah. against the uh, 10 cent increase and just said, let the right. workers, you know, work. We were saying we should be work, paying uh, uh, for less. less. We should go back. <laughs> right. to, we should go yeah. back to the, I want to go dollar. back even the 725 yeah. national minimum wage. That's too yeah. Much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there is a, we watched a clip yeah. from Jesse Welcome Waters on. who was saying uh, that he thought that $20 an hour fast food workers were making a hundred K a year. Um, and he was saying that that's, yeah, yeah, that's, right. that's, yeah. that's the right, that's the right reaction. Right. Should we play it again for you? Right. Have you? Have you not seen this? Yeah. We play it again sure. We can play it again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I kind of want Rebecca's reaction to Run this. It back <laughs> if you're making $20 an hour to work at a fast food restaurant, Right? Is that is that six figures? Are you making six? No, no, no. 40, 40 grand. 50, 40 grand. 50 years just to exit two and out a few zeros. Yeah. Okay. So 40K a year. Okay. Full time. 40K a year. Yeah. So, and then if your husband or wife is also there, you're making $100,000 as a family. Sure. Both working at McDonald's. 80 yes. grand. 80 okay, that is, okay. That's crazy. That is crazy because that job really doesn't require much. So it's inflating the entire, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Labor sector and the happy meal and the happy meal. Unhappy, very which, unhappy, which I'm very unhappy about. But he doesn't even know what the fuck he's saying. No, he like, he the the labor entire, sector? What the call it? He said the la uh, labor. labor uh, inflates the whole labor market for some reason. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, whatever. Like it, I just, I <laughs> like just the, can't get over. Like re re realize what he's saying too. Like he does the forty hours times twenty. He doesn't realize what that 10. means. 
that's 40k but then he, when he says that the, the again the incredible I, I just can't get over the idea that uh you would bring this up as if it's like the norm oh the couples that right. work at mcdonald's together the, that common thing that happens all the time but what he's saying is that working 80 hours a week for 80k annually is too well, much annually. money it's too much oh, money. Yeah, sorry, it's too much yeah. 80 yeah. hours a week yeah. 80 hours a week for 80k a year hmm. is too much money when i see I grocery prices that. people want to yeah. say okay like mm -hmm. they want to say oh you know the gas the gas prices. the gas is down now yeah. maybe it's still more expensive than it ever was mm -hmm. um we talked about rent on uh saturday on on, on like it or not and we we did like the whole show about rent and we discussed how listen that is still not enough to cover what the 45k or whatever the case may be and they ain't even talking about the taxes that's taken now and the mm -hmm. money that we can't even touch in the 401k you know what i'm saying to cover all the other stuff and the money that you got to pay back when you holding out on your taxes so that you can use that extra couple hundred of dollars to go ahead and buy you something to eat if you got big head kids or if it's just you in your home <laughs> like you got light bills you got uh, your car notes you got now you got to have renters insurance for these places mm -hmm. like this is that money is not at the end of the day it does not oh. equal to what they pay it goes away and then what the funny thing is like with wages right our wages are not going up to match everything so you're talking about this point we need to be getting paid more than that and you're talking about this person with their partner some people are single as hell because mm. we can't afford nothing so i don't I, listen i can't even afford to to, to 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 get a snack so i can't afford a relationship right now so you so i'm by myself so my money doesn't even hold it down for me so all of this whole conversation and with this man Who's making whatever money because he got a mind, five million dollars you know, a year? Five million, right. year right? five, five million dollars a year. So that's, he gets that's to sit you down and speak yeah. on the lives of people who are poor or middle classes that's still poor, or the other, you know, right before that, but that's still poor too. Just poor, 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 and then poor, poor, poor. So at the end of the day, like they should not be ahead of these conversations, but people listen to them and then they make up phrases like, you know, the labor sector or whatever. You're talking about like McDonald's and stuff. These stop it you have no you don't know what it's like to be in, in, in um a person who has who's having to work at mcdonald's or whatever or whatever pay um and then not be able to pay your bills or there's so much that goes into it and these are the people who are at the front forefront of the conversations when there's everyday people like us who are actually living it like mm. we're getting paid these amounts and we're still struggling do you understand like we're still struggling so yeah. miss me with all of that right that, that's crazy mm -hmm. yeah yeah, they take fast food workers for granted. If, if mm -hmm. they didn't have access to like quick food, like they they would be pissed, right? If the stock, if the shelves weren't stocked when they go to Walmart, they would be pissed. So they they feel like, oh, this is just such a disposable job. It's unnecessary. This is just for teenagers. That's not the reality of the economy. It is mm -hmm. legitimate work, and this is a job for people for their whole lives. Like when I worked at Walmart, I had elderly people that were there that couldn't retire that were working, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, you, you can't just discount this as temporary work. Like this has been the line for Republicans for such a long time. It's it's just not the reality. Uh, and Rebecca, on your, I, I watched your show, uh, your guys' show on like it, on Saturday for Like It or Not. Mm -hmm. And a point that you made was so good about how rent, like your rent had basically gone up by a thousand dollars, but your wages ha have not mm -hmm. increased. And mm -hmm. I was talking to my niece who's looking for housing right now. And I, I was telling Ben and um, DJ exclusive about this before. Uh, so I told my niece that in 2010, I had an apartment for 500 bucks a month. It was like the cheapest one that I could find. Super cheap, right? Uh, and that was with my blockbuster salary plus student loans. And I'm like, why don't you see how much they're charging? I asked her because like, it's a shitty apartment. Like you can hear people farting literally in the apartment <laughs> over, like literally. Um, That's a bonus like, for some people. <laughs> I <guess> so. <laughs> And I told her, I'm like, check it out and see, you know, see if they have any openings. It's cheap. It should be, you know. And she she did. It's like seventeen hundred dollars now. Uh, just, I mean, it's been fourteen years, but like to go from five hundred to seventeen hundred, like that is a massive jump. So there's no like, rent freeze in Atlanta, I guess, then, right? Because like in where I'm from, BC, you can't increase rent for more than three percent every year. That's the max that you're allowed to. Is 3%. Wow. Yeah. Mm. 
<laughs> Listen, um, I know. Look, Ben. Yeah. Ben is bored. Bored by this rental car. I say bored. Oh, ben, <laughs> you say something right now, Ben. You gonna stay right here because we're gonna we're gonna spice this conversation up. I don't know if oh. you guys heard or um. However, first of all, I we're not <laughs> skipping the rent conversation because it's not good. But we've already had it and Ben falling asleep. We gotta spice it up. All right, we gotta wake, wake Ben up. So what we're gonna do is uh, discuss it, Ben. I know that you know you're into. Uh, no. Ben, I know you're into hip hop culture, right? Uh, yeah. DJ exclusive. I know you're into music. And so, right. Um, I don't know if you guys heard, but I wanted to get all of you guys all, you know, I love the blending of the teams. We're merging together. I wanted to just get you guys' opinion on, you know, you have the, the rappers who are going toe to toe all day, every day right now. We're seeing that. Um, but specifically it's Kendrick Lamar. Um, oh, yeah. and, um, Look, <laughs> I know you Jake, are, but you're not going nowhere, man. Um, it's Kendrick Lamar, and it's also um, why am I? J. Cole. Cole. Drake. J. Cole. And you're Drake. 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 The big three. The big three. Yes, yeah. but it's the, the song that, that that came off on, on Future's latest album with Metro Boomin, uh, and uh, the the song that there was a diss with Kendrick Lamar um, towards it's J. Really Cole. Good, and so it's a really good song. But uh, really so J. Cole responded initially um, with a diss record and on a, on a mixtape, I guess. Yeah, seven, seven minutes. Minutes. And, and it was yeah. it Might was delete good. later. <laughs> right, right. But everybody was like, you know, it was really good. And they were like, oh, okay, we got some rap beef going on, whatever. And people were choosing sides as usual. But he went on to, um, he went on to apologize. He being J. Cole at his concert concert he you know he's in doubt and he was like listen I made a mistake by responding to that when that's a really like, he's aggressive great man and I don't I did something that is now out of my character I'm not even that person anymore type of thing and Ooh. it's you know it sent me back mentally you know it kind of made me relapse mentally and I just want to you know take it back uh and um people were saying you know yeah. man that rat beef rat beef we need to you know continue on with rat beef and you know he ain't no real rapper because he's you know bowing out of the game but i to me my process is if he said he relapsed mentally sometimes we change as as a, mm. like shoot i ain't the person i was this morning you know what i'm saying I'm so but but sometimes you have to understand like okay i went in kind of into what social media and the media and everybody wanted me to step into but that's just not who i am i'm just gonna apologize and move on and some people are now calling him like weak for that but i think it's really social media related because i feel like the the pressures of the media and all that they were waiting for it and he's yeah. like ah nigga got bars like i got bars i could do all this you know whatever and then he did something that wasn't even like like him so what's your guys' take on that i don't, I don't know i'm gonna start I, with ben though ben, I, I'm gonna you, DJ, so ben. rebecca zor i want you to remember this I, like, <laughs> <laughs> All I said was I would just try to go to bed. And get, I saw the eyes. You got the big head you got to eat. Who 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 the, the rapper the the hippity hop the what now? <laughs> <laughs> Kendrick Lamar and J Cole. You know the story, right? No, no, I know, I know, I know the whole story. I I just you know, I'm glad J Cole did what he did because people want to monetize your beef um and and it's just there's way too many rappers who get killed now i remember when it was just biggie and Pac. yeah rappers mm -hmm. get killed every other week in here so you know um but not i i don't think it would have ever escalated that much for j cole and uh kendrick, kendrick lamar and they're both gods um, mcs like they yeah. both right carry carry their own weight, so I don't even know what it was all about or what it was. But in terms of getting pulled back into what you used to be, I certainly understand that part because um, I've been trying my very best not to cuss since I've been pastoring. But you know, just dealing with these um, racists on Twitter, you know, they pulling me back into what I used to do. I get that. <laughs> your tweets are amazing, by the way, Ben. I wish I could say. I wish we could say. Just had the tweet. Ben has the best tweet. Yeah, he, oh, he, he absolutely does. On that the other day. What yeah. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you want it now, it, Rebecca, no, <laughs> go to Benjamin Dixon's Twitter account and just click on replies, and you'll be yeah. Oh, it's, it's great! So fun. It's great on Twitter. I love it. Oh, oh, go not, not your camera going out on these people's show. Look, why we can't act I right? Know. Why y'all can't come here and act right? <laughs> it was fully <laughs> charged, man. It, was, it did a you on your show. <laughs> it did, it did. But 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 I do want to get um your your point um as a DJ too because this this is the way I feel about it. This is the type of stuff that the right. See if I can make this. If I can just do. 
little political slide with it. Um, this is go. the type of stuff that the right likes to take on, like this type of stuff, and they'll choose a side, and you know, they'll because I guess uh, J. Cole said something that was somewhat, in some which way, shape, or form, um, homophobic. That's what they say. And so, no, no, he was he know. was definitely transphobic in in seven. Oh, that's what it was. Okay, there's, so, yeah, yeah. There's there's no question. It's, it's mm -hmm. pretty. So you know, at this point, you know, the right jump on it. You know what? J. Cole's a great rapper. Yeah. J. Cole. Mm -hmm. So this is the stuff. And so I felt like you know he was pr like pressured or or you know whatever doing something that he's grown from, and then now being pulled back into his old self. But this is the type of stuff that the right will pick. Pick up a certain group of people will pick up on the internet and put out and and focus on he did say something that was transphobic and that's what they'll focus on and they have and those are the things and now kind of like making him get out of himself so capitalizing on these moments also kendrick is very much trans affirming and lgbtq plus affirming he He's has got a, whole a song, song. yeah he has a song about his trans uncle on his last album oh. um so it, you know if that wasn't already like a reason for the right yeah, to be against him mm -hmm. it's a really mm -hmm. good track. So you know, DJ exclusive, what's your take? You know, uh, when I first heard about everything that was going on, so to be fair, I have not listened to either one of the songs. I oh, probably yeah. did hear them, but I was just like, I'm not, I'm not playing into it. So I've just been social media uh, trolling with both of them, listening <laughs> to clips and pieces, and I can't even tell you what it, each one was said. But I did see the apology that J Cole put out, and I'm like, okay, that shows a little courage or shows a a little step up in the game to put that out and say, hey, I apologize. I, I should have did that. But what's done is done. And then I saw some other artists like Queen Latifah, a lot of people that's been in the game for a long time, saying, hey, it's still cool. Rap beef is rap beef. And it still, it still helps the game a little bit. You know what I'm saying? To at least let people be themselves. And, and y'all beef it out. As long as y'all not taking it to the streets or being just upright terrible about it, it's cool. But I'm glad it, it, it happened because I mean it's just like now to me the, the rap beef is what sells because mm -hmm. as you see y'all may not know but city girls are beefing and I'm I was hurt by that. <laughs> Do you guys think really? Girls? Look, who knows city girls are beefing? Yeah. City girls. <laughs> hey, they're beefing. Matt, it's a question to Matt. Specific. Yeah, Matt. Matt, Mike. you know city girls. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. That <laughs> honestly is so so mad. I didn't game. know this. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm literally heartbroken. What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Mike, yeah, Wait. it was disappointing when I found it out, too. I'm just like, are they? Uh, are y'all beefing? Like, what is this? And like going uh, hard on I Twitter. I think it's the pressures other. of social media. Wow. Your favorite it is, space. Yes. I think that they start to um, take on the pressures of what people say about y'all and then, or them, and then they pick up on that, and then people start going against each other and that's why i think what j cole did was very like i i feel like okay listen i messed up and i put myself in a bigger hole i done you know yeah. you know uh, like disrespected the trans community and like it's just the whole thing like you just get out of yourself and so i think that right now especially being black i think that the arguments and stuff happening online and it just it just looks messy it just looks just it's not for, right and this particular moment i don't think that any of our favorite artists should be going against each other or however the case may be but you know that's um it's unfortunate, but I do like that yeah. somebody went out of their way to do something different, that being J. Cole, and people are not going to receive it well because, like, you know, they want it to be um, beef or they want it to be division. But I think for our community specifically, especially now, that shouldn't be something that is, you know, put out there um, for us because we need to not me sounding like you know, let's all join together. Yeah, um, kumbaya. Yeah, kumbaya. <laughs> but it just need to be more representation of that. I just think so. Like, you know, wrap it out and that's fine. But um, other than that, you know, I don't know. I, I just, just think that th th this shit to me is, it's stupid when there's no reason for it. Like to, yes. to rap about who's, to, about who's the greatest to me is ridiculous. Like, can you imagine Celine Dion releasing a song about how much better she is than Madonna? Like, it's just a stupid fucking... <laughs> It's a stupid. I think it's stupid. Now yeah, it's entertaining. It, <laughs> like Kendrick's verse was fantastic. It's super entertaining. There's a lot of great entertaining tracks, hundred percent. But you can't like J. Cole's not that person uh, anymore. Anyways, I, again, I, I saw his apology. Like ever since, um, what was it uh, 2014? Forest, Hill, Forest Hills Drive, fantastic mm. fucking album. Ever since mm. then, he's kind of made a turn just to be. Like, you see, he's somebody else. He's not you know a guy that does rap rap beefs. So for him to come out and and like i think it'd be better off if he said that initially and didn't try to force something out because he had pressure around him to to respond 
But regardless, he put something out and he felt weird about it. And he, he replied and, and you know, apologized for it. I think that was a great thing for him to do. That's that's yeah. him being himself. Like, that's what I want out of these people is to, is to be themselves. If Kendrick being himself is is randomly taking shots at other rappers who are, let's be honest, he I think he is technically the best rapper. I don't think there's any yeah. really debate about, about Kendrick Lamar and his talent. But if, right. if he wants to do that, he can do that. But for other people to put pressure on J. Cole or, or I don't know, Drake to respond – that why <laughs> like, let, yeah. let Kendrick be Kendrick we all know he's the best like technically yeah. there's no need to respond that you know it's to me it's all yeah, fuck you yeah. Drake left his mouth Drake. Says, fuck Drake oh. <laughs> no, you're to me Drake, Drake is a pop <laughs> artist like Drake, Drake is a pop <laughs> artist he's not a rap like he's not he's not like he's not Kendrick Lamar he's a pop artist so to expect Drake to 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 match Kendrick is ridiculous like he's not gonna do that no so no, it's no. just I don't know I don't think all the high school three years ago still comes to homecoming. That's Drake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. And you know, and he probably, you know, off of being white and black, sometimes he's in his whiteness and then sometimes he's in his blackness. Maybe about 75% white. But no, um, <laughs> I, so with that being said, um, I wanted to pivot to, I don't know if you guys heard about this, a lot of talk about around abortion. I haven't, mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of things. I've heard a lot of people's testimonies, but I know that um, there was something going on. And if you guys could speak to it. Um, Wait, Rebecca, you- before you, before you ask about abortion, could I ask one quick question? Cause I was, I was following Ben's tweets. We were just talking about them related to Charlemagne the God. Okay. I just, I, I wanted, I wanted a clarification on this. Cause I watched the daily show segment that he did where he's, he says basically that the DEI, DEI is useless. Oh, I haven't the seen sec- that. Okay, so the second half of that that video is basically him saying that it doesn't actually give like any material benefits to black folk and that it's not actually uplifting them in the structure, right? Like they're not getting to the point of being CEOs and bosses and managers. But the start of it, and I saw a lot of people take like a lot of uh, issue with Charlemagne and what he had, and what he had said is is the idea that like him framing it that way was kind of like you know a, a negative thing that he shouldn't have come out of the gates that from the start and said that like it's mostly useless was that was that it yeah um <laughs> both and um plus other stuff that he has incrementally been doing like Charlemagne like Charlemagne is cool until he's not and then he operates in in ways that I really really aggravate me in terms of blackness mm. but in terms of his break now I, I disagree with his second half right there's there are dei programs i know me and rebecca we kind of disagree on this part but there's <laughs> there are dei programs that have been material benefits right that have actually helped has helped structurally like you know whether or not it is able to change the system that's something mm-hmm. totally different but if you go you know pe- group by group person by person there's been plenty of people who benefited from a, a, a dei program um but his framing like I, it, it's not just the blackness of it but it's also the, the 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 rhetoric of it you don't see someone else's framing you don't you don't just give them the framing and say, OK, I'm going to buy into your framing and then I'm going to agree with your framing so I can make another point. That's lazy. Charlemagne. challenge the underlying assumption in that anyone who is making this DEI argument is saying that by virtue of you being a minority, you did not and you could not possibly earn what you got. If you don't attack that, then what you doing, Charlemagne? Mm-hmm. That's all. You don't woke Ben up and here Ben, you know, <laughs> 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 with the DEI thing though, but for his comments, Charlemagne's comments, because he has such a big audience. So yeah. this is where a lot of our black audience people who you know will they'll go there and they trust Charlemagne's uh talking point. So for him to go on there and discredit or have this type of conversation, it hurts more than it helps. Um, because I feel like too, he keeps it very surface um i don't feel like he Mm. goes in to try to get more information on it or however and the people he even brings on i don't think there's no like for these type of conversations there's no pushback there's no research and mind you i know that Charlemagne can do it i've seen him show up in that way uh, many a time seen his interviews but i think lately what we've been seeing especially when it comes to major black issues um or major black topics like dei and we know what the right has done with it, what conservative conservatives has, have done with it so to have just that kind of talking point on it again it doesn't help 
it hurts. So, um, so, you know, Ben says, you know, that there are other things that Charlemagne has done. And that way I know that Charlemagne has also been somebody at the forefront of a lot of great conversations and held those conversations and has held people's feet to the fire when having those conversations. I mean, this is a product of Wendy Williams we're talking about. So, mm -hmm. but, and, and he's had a show where he's had conversations with political leaders. Um, so I don't know why now uh, they're going this route, but this it it just seems to be you know a little bit a little you know I gotta side eye it you know mm -hmm. for 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 just right. I, and I get it Ben I get why you feel the way that you you feel about Charlemagne and I know you you know well no I mean I generally like him mm -hmm. I, I generally just 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 on average I okay. Fine, well enough. His donkey of the days are pretty good. Like, like you mate, know? he don't do them like that no more. Yeah, but it, it's more. it's just if you have the platform and the voice and the opportunity, why would the very first thing you do would be to seed a faulty and fallacious argument, a uh, uh, framing? Mm -hmm. Why would you give that to Republicans? No, attack them. You're on the Daily Show. Ten million people are going to see you attack their premise don't give it to them and say oh yes dei is is bad or whatever no you are a racist if your underlying assumption is that anyone who is a minority got what they got because they are diverse and inclusive no anyway and DEI, as I said, you know, I don't really like it too much because I feel like it's that one black person in the office that holds the whole dang. They'll literally be like, hey, you, hey, you. OK, you're, you're a black person. I need Rick. We have we have a, a new section that we want you to head. And then you, they get there. They think they got a team. It's them and one other person. And they're holding down this whole thing on yeah. their own. But the company will say, we are proud of our blacks. And so you know, we can see the whites in their eyes. And, and, you, know, <laughs> you know, our black people, we, we're, we're diverse here. And it's like, yeah, you gave this, this, you know, these black people so much on their shoulders to carry instead of hiring more black people because that would be DEI, right? And giving them opportunities here and holding it down that way. But no, that ain't how they doing it. So that's my, so that's how I feel about DEI. Rebecca, and I yeah, like I, listen, I, you, you reminded me of, um, okay, so I used to work in the tech industry but years ago when I lived in Boston. And we were at our annual, you know, meeting and the CEO got up there. We had about at least 10,000 people in there. He said, look to your left, look to your right. Not very diverse, is it? We're all trying to find out who oh, does. Only black person on the left side of the entire team, <laughs> and of course, so, but we were on the cutting edge of diversity and inclusion. This was at least a decade ago, and there I was, the only black person in the entire half hemisphere of the meeting. Yeah, DEI gave, us, <laughs> DEI gave us um, and which was great at the time, but this is what DEI does, right? And I'm going to give you an example. Um, DEI gave us Black Twitter in 2020. Black Twitter popping. They had their own section, um, you know, at the in the office. You know, all of the things, right? Um, they started hyping up Black people, and then we saw with Netflix. Oh, we had a section, baby. They Black movies was coming out. They were pushing out, you know, lots of Black creators. Um, you know, that that was a thing. Uh, black voices. That's what, you know, we started seeing that a lot. as soon as. You know, <laughs> all of that died down like, just like a, maybe a few months ago, a year ago. Baby, the they was doing the watermelons. Remember at the candles, the what the watermelons and I stuff? DEI. I don't know who was in the room with that. One black person, because that's what happens when you got one black person. DEI, but all those things, but it's this is what DEI is. All of the sudden, we seen all of the layoffs for those yeah. black the um mm -hmm. for those black sections in these big companies and these big names. Netflix dropped that whole Black voices section or where, where they had the people who were focusing on black oh. content there. Those people that they just went away with that. The and then section no more. And and then what tar, <laughs> look, tar, the, the creators at Target, now they're just it's not the same as it was a few years ago. Now it's curated and people, it's just kind of like we're gonna choose these three people each time now for the Target 
um, you know, uh, February month, February month, Black History Month, because for me, Black History is every single day. But, um, you know, with and we've seen with Twitter when uh, the takeover with Elon Musk, he did away with all that stuff. But he wasn't the only one. I know people were upset about that. But other companies were doing the same exact thing. No longer did we need to have this. We, so, we see how Ron DeSantis uh, is doing with uh, the... Anything that has to do with blackness at white schools, yeah, let's take it away because we don't need that. He's saying that that promotes division, right? Switching it up, right? When it's supposed to be equality, it's supposed to be inclusion. And now he's saying, this is what DEI is. They don't take it serious. And that's what I'm like, the, the rollback of what it was, right? That now they rolled it back. It ain't, we don't need it anymore because, you know, we had the three years where we gave people blackness. We don't need yeah. that anymore. We don't need that anymore. The person that sued Starbucks, when Starbucks, because remember, they were like the first ones to roll out with shutting down and having that diversity and inclusion meeting, you know, the sensitivity meeting about mm. how you need to treat black people when they come in and get their copies or whatever the case may be, or when how those people need to treat um, our, our, our baristas, you know, black, like stuff like that, having those conversations. That man, a few years later, he went, he got money. For the, it's like it, there's there's just rollbacks. People don't think about about it anymore. It's like DEI isn't important. So now DEI has become the conservatives have taken it, yeah. and now it's become equivalent to the hard ER. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. RT woke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all the same. Yep. yep. So that's that's you know my take on D. That's why I don't like it. That's why I never did because it never was serious to people. They never. They, it just was something for them to do to say you know our blacks. OK, we we uh, you know, we go hand in hand. We we too have black employees and we treat them great. We put them in a specific department and they you know, they're thriving here are one black. Right. That's that's exactly what like it's just always about. It's the, yeah. so you're saying, Rebecca, it's the corporate equivalent of we can't be racist. We have a black friend or yeah. a, a would, black oh person God. right here. See, <laughs> yeah. We employ exactly black people. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Oh, man. I have black friends. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget this Ph.D. program, I guess. Well, that I was a part of and they were taking photographs. <laughs> and they came all the way around campus to come find my black ass. Because <laughs> they can have a diversity and inclusion on the whole thing of the university. Of oh, they, 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 the Trump thing. Me. Remember that Trump, uh, that Trump uh, rally where he's like, there's my black. I can only see the black. And it's like, sir, like, this is what I'm talking about. Ben, we were DEI hires when we at that one place. We were DEI hires, like, to the point where they were like, they were so infatuated with me and my the hair of choice that that month and my nails and they were like we just need somebody like you the way they were staring at me is just incredible oh my god that you know i will never forget it in the interview they were just staring at me and they were like your nails your hair <laughs> Oh, your skin. And then when we got there, they're like, we need we need our blacks at the forefront. <laughs> and we ended oh up God. taking over. It we had white people, white anchors there, and they left, and the black people was the one holding down that whole thing. So and, and when we got too black and we started saying, right. you know what, let's let's do two Trump stories today, but let's talk about what the police are doing to black people today. <laughs> and they were like, oh, a little bit no too way. much of that. It's getting a little black. Oh my god. It's getting a little black. And then we start, we talked about Black Panther, which did numbers for that company with that we, we what millions of views. Yeah. And they were like, yeah. you need to stop right now. So <laughs> what? like literally that place that dissolved because. We were DEI hires. And the story we evolved wow. just a little each time she tells it. But it's essentially, <laughs> what she said is essentially, yes. But it's actually worse, Rebecca. You forgot the best part. They literally came to us and said, it's giving BET. Yeah. yeah. They said wow. that. It's giving and BET. They said they, that. What? In a meeting, in a meeting they, pulled, they pulled us to the side because they were so upset yeah. that, first of all, they weren't showing up. Benjamin took the reins and was like, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. So the show, like it or not, be give Ben his props. You know, he ain't put me on the marquee at that time, but now the, I am now on, your the name on the marquee. Yeah, I, the show was mine. But no, but then, you know, I wasn't on the marquee or whatever, but Ben did create this. Ben created it and, you know, did what he needed to do because they left it in our hands and they were just like, yeah, whatever. And we did take it somewhere. We took, we got a great audience. We grew it. But- 
they shut it down they got during Black that. History Month. During Black History Month. <laughs> they they got got during Black History Month. They had a meeting oh with us God. and they came out of nowhere and they said, you know, specifically to me, you know, hey, you know, some of our, um, you know, stakeholders were saying, Sweet you, man. you, you know, Rebecca, they watched you on mute and they said that you gave BET. And Ben was like, hold up wow. now, hold up now. Hold up now. Now you said wow. she gave BET. Excuse me. Ben Ben stepped in for me at that moment, but I was like, I went out sharp and real quick. He did. Uh, he did. The problem. <laughs> so, yeah, but they definitely say I get. I said, but did they click me off of mute? Did you, as my boss mm -hmm. who hired me on, did you? What did you say on my behalf? No, she didn't say anything. First of all, she called. She was. She called herself Olive at the time. Um, she was. Uh, she is a person of color, and but at that she she angels, she. Right? She moved in whiteness. She moved in whiteness. But she moved in whiteness. And I'm like, so for you to be an ally and you hired me on because of what I look like, um, you, what did you say for me in that room? And here we go. DEI hires. They not gonna hold these people are not gonna hold it down for you in the room when other people are talking about you. They're not gonna hold it down. They know your skills, they know you're qualified, they know why you're here. You hired me because I'm a journalist, you hired me, okay, because I'm black, but when people are speaking about me. And as my boss, as you know what my qualifications are, you know I'm experienced for this, but you sat there in the room and you allowed them, these people, to say what they thought of me by just watching me on. And she specifically said they watched me on mute. They didn't watch That the is segment. so unhinged. Yeah, yeah it really is. Yeah. Jesus. And yeah. those, they were progressives. Mm -hmm. Alle allegedly. Allegedly. They're, they're the progressives in Get Out. The yeah, like city vote for Obama three yeah. times yeah. if you could. Mm -hmm. That's it. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. 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 But that was it. And wow. here we are today. Um, with no longer DEI for us and by us. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's just kind of how the cookie crumbled. You know, um, here's what it shows, though. You know, they feel like they have the reins. And a lot of these companies do do the same thing because they do. They have the money. They have the resources. Everything comes a little bit easier to them in their whiteness and, you know, in their companies. And so these black people think that and Issa Rae can attest to this because she's dealing with this as we speak. Um, if you guys know Issa Rae, she made um, what the hell the show? Insecure. Uh, insecure <laughs> OK. And, and, and all them other shows. But she talks about this, too. But these people will get you in on there because right now black is popping. You're content is popping you bring them you know what people are looking for right now the sensitivity with black people and then all of the sudden they don't need you anymore that's happened with Issa Rae she said you know a lot of my my shows are being canceled at like at HBO at all these places because they no longer they don't value black people and their their mm. stories um, or their content. So when they're done with you as a DEI hire they they just send you away. So she's like now I'm focusing on doing it for us and by us. And in that time when we're doing it like that, it doesn't get as much press. It doesn't get as much push, but right. we have to be able to sacrifice and hold it down that way with lower numbers or whatever by still just holding it down by giving black news. Because again, it in media, us telling our stories has always been limited. So we got to be the ones to be at the forefront of it. And regardless of if we got two viewers, a 2,000 viewers, or 2 million viewers, we're just going to still have to keep holding it down Amen. in that way on our own. So, yeah, that's my They want the credit for being, like, progressive and having these diverse mm -hmm. hiring practices. But, like, they just want you there. Like, they don't want to hear about Black stories. They don't want actual substantive representation. They want descriptive representation. Mm -hmm. And that's really what a lot of it was about. Like, with, with Google, for example, and Meta as well, like, mm -hmm. they announced their DEI programs during the George Floyd protests. So mm -hmm. they're trying to basically capitalize on that, yeah. elevate themselves, use it for good PR, and then a couple of years later... Yeah. When people stop talking about that because, you know, uh, Republicans had co-opted any messaging around that, started talking about CRT and whatnot, then they just quietly shut down those programs or scale them back significantly yeah. because like, eh, we're done. We don't need the PR from that. Let's move on to the next thing or whatever it is. It's just right, so disingenuous. Because they don't actually yeah. care. Like it's, it's yeah. it comes from a place of them just not wanting to be called racist more so than it comes from mm -hmm. a place of them actually wanting to do something. Like for them actually wanting to bring about some sort of change and make things more inclusive and um, share diverse voices. And, well, it's the same um, with every form of know. watching, right? Raymond right. Yeah. Watching, it's exact same of, thing. It's, you it's, don't actually care about queer folks. You just want to sell like flags. 
You know, mm-hmm. that's yes, they, I, so, yeah. it's uh-huh. like they could have a gay person as like a friend in a movie, but if you actually depict like a romantic relationship, there's like, whoa, that's that's too much gayness. The audience just wants to see that. In, in a Disney yeah. movie, yeah. like, come on, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like it's all like Wild. surface level, just like. They want to pat themselves on the back. We're progressives. Mm-hmm. We include everyone. But then shut the fuck up once you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Brandy is, um, as we know, she was the black Cinderella. Uh, mm-hmm. The one that I know. The one that, With um, Whitney Houston, right? I is that the same movie? Okay. But yeah. Brand- the, the Cinderella. Mm-hmm. When I, say I remember Cinderella, that as a kid. When I say Cinderella, I'm talking about Brandy. I don't know nobody else. I know there was <laughs> yeah, somebody in the blue dress before huh? that, but I'm talking about Brandy. And so... There's I there's a show and I forget the show and I'm pretty sure you guys know it but they're they're bringing her back on they're gonna make like a movie on Disney Plus and she's coming back on as Cinderella right and so I went to the comment section and you know where I was I was on the book of face I was on Facebook and mm-hmm. so the people were having conversations oh, no. in the in the comment section and they were like Very like normal. I just for some reason knew she was gonna be black somebody was like in the 90s bro she this was Cinderella this is the same Cinderella and they're just bringing her back because she this she's a Disney princess this Cinderella and they like was a Disney princess and it it was such a big deal so they're bringing her back you know, for this live action film because it makes sense. So there were so many like white people like so upset. I just knew they were going to try to make it black like they do while adding gay scenes to television shows. They want to add <laughs> some black to, to the original Cinderella. They just were so upset about it. And like, it's the I'm same like, outrage yeah. over and over. They were doing the same yeah. thing yeah. for Little Mermaid. I have to point well, out the Little Mermaid like has canonically in other portrayals, including TV musicals, been non-white in, in mm-hmm. multiple different portrayals. There's been different mm-hmm. Little Mermaids, even mm-hmm. in the cartoon. You know, yeah. plus they're mermaids. They're 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 not real. They could be yeah, anyone. Like, oh, what, what are we doing here? And, and, and that, like... that version of Cinderella was so good that it, I was young and I was I did not realize. Now, the prince is Asian. His daddy white. His mama black with dreads. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, Brandy black. Her stepmama white. That can happen. Stepmama got these a black baby. Okay, fully 100% black, and then um, a, a redhead baby. Like I don't know, it was just crazy, you know. And it's just different Art sizes, different different skin colors. But it was so good that I just wanted Brandy to go get the prince. You know, I didn't care. I didn't know. We didn't focus on that. So I think that was what people should focus on. You know, they had like kind of gay characters in it. They had you know the whole color thing. Like we weren't focused. They had every body from every walk of life in that movie so that to me was a great movie for us and people over there mad like where have you been under a rock cinderella was black cinderella was black or the her man was asian you know it was a very mixed movie in that way and i just don't know why they you know people want to they're going to bring outrage about it again and just like they did like you said with um little mermaid oh, and whoever else they're bringing right now that, that new romeo and juliet shakespeare oh, plays yeah. or, I'm I'm losing mind oh over yeah there, so i need so to go look at that because that, that's my first time hearing about that. Oh, the, the colorizing Romeo and Juliet. Okay. They're going crazy over that one. But the, the thing about that one is, it's just the the the, the West End uh, play in London. It's not even the movie. It's for oh, wow. the live theater version. Which a that happens all the time in live theater. It shows how mm-hmm. little they know about live theater. Like it's even more common to just cast whomever for a specific role regardless of what the race of the character is uh, in in live theater than it is in like film and tv and then second of all i can't think of a better sort of representation of romeo and juliet than actually having one of the Two either houses. romeo or juliet being white or either romeo and juliet are being the other one being black like it mm-hmm. makes perfect sense for that particular story especially mm-hmm. like, yeah like especially. how ridiculous is it to have a problem with something that a his historical commonality in the theater and then b makes complete sense for this classic story Mm-hmm. Well, they it's- always change like the goalpost, right? Like a couple of weeks ago, they were saying it was DEI, but now that by mm. that, we all know that they just mean the N word. Now they switched to mm. no, no, no. We're not mad because she's black. We're mad because she's not attractive enough. It's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But you have the same conversation about any character yeah. who's black or any character who doesn't like fit into the box. And I don't like white people saying that about black people anyway. Don't <laughs> right. you yeah, don't get to say- <laughs> like first of all, you're racist and you're saying she's not attractive enough or this person isn't attractive enough. Which is so disgusting. They're saying. black because they're black, and that's yeah. that's the issue. Yeah. So you're really just saying that person's in the yard. 
It's just a new synonym for the same racist argument. Yeah, but they think that they're being clever. They they literally think, oh, I have plausible denial. No, it's the same thing you've been saying now forever. Mm -hmm. You could switch it to DEI or CRT or a different acronym. Honestly, to to use their own shit against them, I can't think of anything more beta than being judgmental (laughs) of women like that. As a true alpha, I love all. (laughs) (laughs) I don't care. Uh, I mean, it's so ridiculous. It, they are, they are so ridiculous, and it's so clear that it's like it's more obvious than ever. It's just purely driven by racism. Like we always That's knew it. as people in this That's space. It like it's nothing new, but like I feel like they don't even care about putting on like the, the like show the again. show for like the normies yes. anymore. They're just openly mm-hmm. like being like, uh, "Fuck it, they're black. I hate this movie because they're I, black." Like. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I appreciate the racist of old now. I yeah. I used to be, you know, you look back and think of, you know, Bull Connor or Barry Goldwater and like, you know, but see, you look at Barry Goldwater and like he was a, a racist who put a lot of time and thought into his racism. They don't even, they're not even creative anymore. They just mm-hmm. throw anything at it and see what sticks. <laughs> That's the, true. It, la- the laziest racism imaginable. The laziest no thought. Racist. I saw they there it's also it's not just happening like in the movie industry it's happening within games as well like there's a lot of heat around the Spider-Man 2 video game that came out last year because mm-hmm. Miles Morales of course he's a black latino Spider-Man but then his girlfriend is in the in the game as well and there's a mission with uh her and she's deaf as well so I thought it was a really yeah. cool mission because they depict it as if like you know from her perspective where there's there's not sound there and you're helping another person with an art project and like, no, no, we don't like that mission because uh, it was boring, not because it was you were playing as a black woman. Yeah, and there's another crazy. mission with Miles Morales where he's helping this high school guy try to fix up. Um, I don't know yes. what it was like. Put turn the projector on or something. Yeah, turn he the was helping. On. Yeah, he was helping his <laughs> him ask his boyfriend to homecoming. Right, and they're like, yeah. nope, that was forced. See, they shoehorned <laughs> in the gayness there. Uh, if it was, you know, and it's just like there's a always. Lot of the- there's always some bullshit excuse for your thinly veiled bigotry. A lot of yeah. this stuff, I think, is is driven by algorithms. It's like you have one mm. YouTuber, one or two YouTubers, like, yeah. like this is an easy way to get clicks, and then their focus on that generates other dipshits to be on Twitter or wherever mm-hmm. and feed into it. And it's it's like it's not it doesn't help the fact that Twitter's a fucking cesspool that is not moderated yeah. at all. Uh, YouTube is moderated, but the but when it comes to like, it has to be overt and like, you know, mm-hmm. you have to be like, you know, wearing a fucking swastika on YouTube to be taken off there. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be OK. Like on so, Twitter, you get promoted. So they're, they're not going to moderate your. <laughs> I, yeah, me, they're not going to moderate me, your criticism of Spider-Man 2, which are just overtly racist or yeah. or, or bigoted because <laughs> it isn't as overt as it needs to be for them to moderate it. Yeah. So, um. See, they, they come on the show and they embarrass me. And I'm so sorry about this, y'all. Um, for Benjamin Dixon and DJ X3C. Um, I they got they gotta go. Ben, ben, ben tired, he only is sleeping, and then DJ oh, you guys X3C. can go whenever you want. Sorry, don't feel like you're trapped here. I was almost gone 30 minutes. You made it to the end, just like literally 10 minutes left in the show. And DJ XRC saying he gotta go because they frying chicken. And I just can't I'm jealous. I just can't do that. No, I'm jealous. Go, y'all leave me. Oh, we're frying the good chicken and say goodbye to people. Goodbye, y'all. Real quick, I did want to bring up the same outrage that they're doing is also the same thing that they're doing with Jolene, uh, Beyonce's version of Jolene. Oh, yeah. It's, which oh, is yeah. she changed the words to that and I'm, I'm, it's an amazing song as Dolly Parton. She changed the words to it but gave all cr- writing credits okay, to, which Dolly she, Parton. to Dolly Parton and you know just to make it easier I feel like just because they knew like whatever but they're still having an issue with it. The C- um, CMT still kind of made her feel left out, even yeah. though they, I guess, you know, let her be on stage, you know, I think awarded her with something, something, whatever. But the radio stations are still having a problem with her. She did this. And when she said, this is not a, a country album, I understand what she means by that. Now she put country artists on there who do not get the recognition that they yeah. need black country mm-hmm. artists on there because she knows that if she would have did this, she, she like, this would help these people out. Cause they said that she can't do country, but there are artists that do do country who are black. And if we, if we take it even back, 
who really created country? We could really go, we could really go there, but we're not. So, but this is why there was a reason why, but people are mad about it. You know, there is an outrage about it uh, because yeah. now they're claiming boots. Black people can't wear boots now. They're claiming boots. They're blaming, <laughs> they're claiming cowboy hats. They're claiming like, oh, that is, that is. So this is cultural appropriation. Yes, right. <laughs> How are they wearing boots? And how are they wearing culture. hats? And there were never any black cowboys. They were like, are we serious right now? Like, they're upset about that, you know? And so it's, again, it's this selective outrage. Yes. Um, and it's when black people yeah. do it, it is problematic. And yeah. so, yeah, you're right about that. You know, you're right about that for sure. Y'all yeah. can go now because y'all just. Yeah, I feel cool bad. We're, we're keeping you guys here. Yeah. I feel bad because I've been yawning. And I don't, I hate when I'm on somebody's show and it gets. No, I know. I yawn. I'm tired on the show from the start. So don't worry about it. Oh, man. I'm always over the horn and I'm trying to like. And you can go, like, you can tell, go do, they, do they hear the, the chicken frying in here? I'm like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and really, I just, that's really black of you. And I didn't I, need you to bring that here. We get out of here. I love you know, how like you for me to now. finish the show. And I'm just like, y'all, just hold on a second before you fry the chicken. And then it's okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, you, thank y'all for having me, though. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for coming thank on. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, I'll be back soon. Okay, absolutely, no, not. absolutely, not. Damn, yes, Rebecca. Rebecca. Bye, Bubba. We'll see you. Bye, y'all. Love y'all. <sighs> okay, no home training. Can't have no get out of here so I can talk about you. Love, look, love and mean it. But you see, you see, y'all wanted them all here, and here they go. But no, absolutely, they love were great. Out. I had a great I know. time with them. I, good, I'm happy you did. Look, I love that the again. <laughs> Joining in together, I'm and I love worlds. it. I love it. it Merging it means, the worlds together. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much, and I'm in both worlds, so that's good. I love it so much. So, but um, now I, gotta I feel like it. we're we're like you know when um when your parents are divorced. Not that I can relate to this, but then they start like dating, and you're meeting like the two different step parents. Like we're mm -hmm. meeting, like we're the parents meeting uh our Rebecca or what? Wait, I just fucked up the analogy. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like we're like meeting, like oh you so you're with the, you love our daughter, we love your daughter, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, that, that's what it is. It, it, I I'm definitely did not at all think like that at all. It's, it's <laughs> did not, crazy. Divorce did not come to my mind. I think I think it gives more. <laughs> it, it, it got crazy. It got crazy, Mike. But I think it gives more like when you have your favorite TV show, and then they bring in your other favorite TV show, and then they like. Are in the same one episode, mm, yeah, and it's mm. just giving the vibes. That's what it gives. It's That's like that, mm -hmm. that Ninja Turtles crossover. Crossover, crossover with like other yes. shows from the '90s that I can't remember. So I don't know why I brought up the uh, the analogy. Are you talking about divorce and stuff? Why? Why do you gotta make it? <laughs> You know, I'm actually the one. Who's Every story's got to be tragic. <laughs> I know. Every yeah, you see my my mental space that I'm in. It's like, no, it's the first time meeting your kids with the custody battle. You come together. Oh my god, it's so much, yeah. so much trauma. Oh my. I don't know why Jesus. it's so specific for me. No, no, I know that is that's a little specific. You you talking to somebody, Mike? Look. No, no. You got. You might have to talk to somebody. But. I know. Um, I know that before um, I was going to mention abortion and only because um, I know it's trending right now, but because mm, what they're trying abortion to do. Abortion is trending. <laughs> yeah, right. Abortion is trending. When is it not? But, you mm. know, of course, because it's something crazy. I know I don't I know about the, the law that they were trying to repeal or whatever it was. That they, Of course, they were trying to discuss. Um, but it does. It criminalizes abortion basically uh, for pregnancy unless the woman's life is at risk. And so I, what I've been seeing online is a lot of women sharing their stories. Uh, mm. One woman was speaking about um, her, the she was having, um, I think she had to have a DNC or something like that, and they wouldn't allow her to. So she then had to basically risk her, risk her life and go in, I think and have a cesarean or something, um, still give birth to this this baby that was no longer alive and so and then and now it caused her health issues long-term health issues as you know for them to try again and things like that because oh, she yeah. wasn't able to get the help that she needed and that's the so, texas woman right rebecca yes yes mm -hmm. yeah okay so, and i seen more testimonies of people underneath the comment section and things of that sort and i couldn't mm -hmm. imagine being in that position, you wanting a family, but right now, you know, this pregnancy, you can't, you can't go through with it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. medically you're not, it's, it's hurting your body. So, you know, the baby 
is not going to make it, but they're going to criminalize you if you go and get this abortion. So now she had to do that. And she has long term health issues because of it, um, because they wanted to. I know this is like Arizona Republicans um, and a legislator, the, legis, um, the legislation there that they were trying to push. But I don't know too much about it. So I want to know if you guys had any more insight on it, my, my camera. But while I get that together, I didn't know if you guys have any more insight on it. Um, we did talk about it earlier. A, a, we a talked about it earlier. Before, yeah, yeah, before you came on. But essentially, oh, yeah. uh, okay. as Binder, uh, Binder was saying, it's apparently uh, they they used the precedent of a law from like 1866 or something to justify uh, the entire uh, ordeal. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's I mean, it's older than 1866 in my eyes. It feels 1864. Medieval. It was 1864. Oh, 1864. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but it it, it, it feels like again that. medieval mm -hmm. for yeah. going to a system where like women are going to die. That's what's going to happen. That's the end result of these policies: is that women die, babies die. It, it's uh, horrifying, and doctors become criminals overnight. Yeah. You know? like, yeah. This is this is the woman's story that Rebecca okay. talking about. This is actually an ad that Biden released, and I have my criticisms of Biden, but this is a really good ad. Okay. So this is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. Here's her little baby book. Oh, man. This is the outfit that she was going to maybe wear home from the hospital. All of these. Um, this is... The blanket that she was in. Jesus. And these are her little footprints. Wow. It's okay. <laughs> I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. That broke my heart into all the little pieces. Like I heard, I seen they were speaking about it and they were sharing her testimony and other people were too. But watching that, and of course, you know, I know that was for Joe Biden to push his campaign, but that is like a strong case though. She's not the only mm -hmm. one that probably had to deal with something like that. But imagine being pregnant, miscarrying, not being able because they would criminalize you to go and get a DNC or whatever you needed in that moment. Um, and to have that baby taken out properly uh, to save your life. Um, and they want to criminalize you for that. But then you ended up getting sepsis. Um, and now, you know, the implications from that long-term health issues, you want your baby, you want a baby, you want a family, and you may possibly never be able to do that because of a, something like this, a law like this that's put in place that criminalizes you for something that you can't control. Mm -hmm. And you were looking we should, we should, for health care for it. Right. We should say, because in case one of us or, you know, we ever upload this episode as a podcast, we just say that in between those, um, you know, the, the family talking was text on the screen that basically said that um, the doctors couldn't do anything for her because of Trump, uh, you know, the repeal of Roe v. Wade, mm -hmm. um, that she almost died of a sepsis twice after she was rushed to the hospital. Um, the damage that was done um may uh, res results in her never being able to get pregnant again and then the final you know text on the screen said trump did this um mm -hmm. i think it's important to say that for people who might yeah. be listening to just the audio because right. if you're just hearing this family cry and then joe biden come in at the end saying i support this message right it That's came a off point. a bit weird yeah yeah it's important to see the visuals and the text on screen yes and these yeah. stories are important because i think that so many republicans they had this weird like caricature of women who get abortions in their head where it's like, oh, you know what? I'm eight months pregnant. I changed my mind or I had the baby. You know what? Throw it in the garden. Yeah. Like they literally think that like Trump just said mm -hmm. that. And so they don't understand that like first and foremost, most abortions occur like at the very, very, very beginning stage. But when they're later on, oftentimes it's because they like if you realize that there is a zero percent chance of survival for your baby and you're given the option of carrying it to term and pushing out a baby that will live for like an hour and then die quickly or not having to have your heart broken like that, like you should be able to make that choice, right? And yeah. people think that it's not that complicated. They think it's just very 
black and white where it's mm -hmm. like okay this is murder or not murder mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why you even saw like a lot of stories in i think within the first year of roe um where people who were previously pro-life came out and said oh wow i didn't realize that this would affect me because i had a miscarriage and now my doctor doesn't feel confident giving me the procedure that i need because it's the identical procedure that they give for people who want abortions and i'm not sick enough yet so mm -hmm. I have to come back when I'm sick. And so it's like a wake up call to a lot of people, which is why I think it's radicalized so many normies because they they never thought of it that deeply. They just they like a lot of people just took abortion for granted because we've had it for, you know, since what was in 1970 when Roe v. Wade was uh, was the uh, decided at the Supreme Court. And so, like, it was easy to be pro-life when you've never thought about these actual individual stories. But the fact that these stories are so common and they are in everyone's face. Like, um, I think it's going to have a huge impact, you know, and on the on the election. I mean, it already is. It already mm -hmm. is right. having a huge yeah. impact. Every every single yeah. place where this has been on the ballot, yeah. Democrats, you know, the the uh, the adjacent Democratic races, the Democrats won in places where even like you know Republicans could you you know usually would win. Kansas. This has been a, 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 yeah. This has been a winning issue for mm -hmm. Democrats. And I don't mean to like take this and, and turn it into electoral politics, but I mm -hmm. mean, the, what, what, you know, the, the fact that it happened is due to yeah. electoral politics. Um, yeah. But like the Republicans are are running on a losing issue. And like I mentioned earlier, some of them know it and trying to, to run from it now. Like, you know, just a couple months ago, they're going, we did this. And now when this happens and people like us say, you did this they go no no after they were going we did this um you know but th this is this is an issue that they will never win and this can be honestly this this could be the issue that you know if they continue to run on being you know pro-life like this or pro yeah. anti-abortion i should say yeah. um then that's that's the issue that that's going to further ostracize them. Th that's it for Republicans if they're going to keep going with this. And then there's all signs show they are even after the, you know even though they're out there saying like Donald Trump and Carrie Lake are out there saying oh we don't support this law they really do. I mean everything they've done mm -hmm. up to this moment supports that supports law. Supports that law, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, it, that was that was probably the most effective Democratic ad I, mm -hmm. I've seen. Like that was very effective. Yeah. It, it, there was no bullshit. It was just yeah, a it was straight honestly, message from these yeah. people that were affected by this. And yeah. that was if they keep putting out ads like that and enough people see that, that that's gonna have an effect. Yeah. And and I think her story, and again, from her story, I've read so many other people's stories related to it. And again, I benefited from in my own life where I was able to uh, and regardless of my beliefs, my parents' beliefs, or whatever the case may be, I, in a moment in time, I benefited from being able to have access to get an abortion. And so, like, you know, hearing other people's stories, and I know that, I know people, I know people who, if they couldn't get access to, you know, getting an abortion or however, there's the black market clinics you know, where they're putting their lives at risk to go and do this because they either know that they can't have the baby. I know somebody who know who kept who kept getting pregnant, but it was not working out for her. She couldn't carry a baby to term and was told by doctors she could not carry a baby to term. And so um, she just chose like, OK, I'm not I'm, this is not going to be something I want to do. She ended up getting pregnant. She was married. Um, but they denied her. She had to go to another state. She had to literally take off work, pick up, go to another state so that she can handle this because she knew she didn't want to go through that again, the mental stress, all of the, she went through so many miscarriages. And so at that point, her and her partner decided they just weren't going to do it anymore. And so she just went off somewhere. She had to go to another state pay for a hotel, all these type of things just so that she can get the proper care. But I also know people who had to go elsewhere to, um, who knows what pill they're being given, but they had to trust that this was the pill that they needed by somebody else having access to it. And on, and in the black market market clinics for this, they were getting these pills and just trusting that this was going to be something that was an abortion pill or whatever. But this is what happens. People are desperate or people need the, this, this type of health care and they're taking it away because they're choosing, you know, they're saying they're making it equivalent to um, you murdering a baby. And meanwhile, what's happening, what, in Palestine? They ain't worried about them kids. 
They yeah. weren't by them kids. Then a whole bunch of people who have abortions or who have access to it are usually, you know, women who I know are in church or have cheated or whatever. They get free access to this stuff. Um, people's uh, mistresses, you know, some of your favorite Republicans and them, they 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 get to give them the, the access to these abortions or whatever. But people who actually need them for whatever reason, for health reasons, like this one woman who is not the only woman. She's not the only story. There are so many people like that. Mm -hmm. But this law limits people from getting the, the health care that they need. Now she has to suffer with long term health issues for a family that she wants. If she would have gotten the health care that she needed in that time, she probably would have a family today. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's yeah. based on what you were just talking about. Did all of you hear what happened to Fresh and Fit? Fresh and Fit. Oh, no, I really... heard. Oh, happened. I, yeah. I don't know what happened. What it's, happened? This, it's exactly what you're just mentioning. Uh, Fresh from Fresh and Fit ended up impregnating a sex worker. And the sex worker was DMing him. And we know now because she leaked all the DMs and they've since admitted that this is all real. Um, after impregnating the sex worker, she was like, I want to have the baby, but blah, 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 I don't have an abortion. He's like, uh, no, I don't want to be a father. You have to have the abortion, blah, blah, blah. When like on their show, the Fresh and Fit podcast is all about men got to take personal responsibility, all mm -hmm. this kind of shit, you know, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. well, of course, not, they're not, full not, of shit. Not, of yeah. course. Not, not yeah. when it happens yeah. to you. Of course. When was it was it the guy Myron who was like nearly teary eyed, like going on a rant? Oh, like I amazing. support him no matter what. Like yeah. it's okay, so you just all hypocrite. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the people, though, the, that will sit up there and say, like, like Republicans do. They're like, you know, I support life. Meanwhile, they got like ten abortions in the bag already for oh, whoever, yeah. or, and or the women who are quietly having them. Um, this is sometimes a situation of, hey, you guys are thinking that this is, oh, we just are popping abortion pills. I don't care what you know, social media culture, logistics, or whatever they do want to have those conversations. That's just a small portion of what people are in predicaments where they they don't have access, you know, to it much. So they know if I have this child, this child's gonna come into a system. I can't give for them. I can't provide for them. Um, this is gonna like I don't want to put them in a system. These are they think about those things so they know right now in the early stages, I'm going to go ahead and terminate my pregnancy. Rape happens, right? And now like those are things that people are not considering. Like, oh, you know, but the, the, there's life in this body. There's life in, in this person. It could be a, a, a underaged um, young girl who's carrying a child um, because of rape. And they're just like, but this is God's will for their life. Mm -hmm. This is, but there's an option to give this person a life. Let's give this, let this child be a child. Like, but now, here we are, but they don't see that. But for them, they can quietly and go make sure they take care of those things, um, but then and present themselves as something different and opposite. So I, I don't like it. Um, I think, again, people can have their take on abortion, whatever. I once had my take on abortion as well, um, but then life hit me. And so, you know, like just knowing we need to be able to have that choice for whatever reason, but I think for health reasons, man, that shouldn't even be something that you take away. This woman's body was at risk. She could have died. She could have died. And now she can't even have the life that she um, wants because of that. Possibly never being able to have a child. Look, she really wanted that they were set up. They were doing all this stuff. And, you know, she doesn't get a chance to really try again. Um, you know, with some kind of security because of this happening there. The fact that this was preventative, like there was... Yeah, it's an unnecessary it, tragedy. It was, you see what I'm saying? It, it was just because, you know, a whole bunch of white men said it's we women's bodies, we need to control it and, you know, you can't... Abortion is, uh, is not God, you know, is not godly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the Lord and abortion worked out for me. So, yeah, you know what? It's I, also I don't in even... the Bible. Yeah, that's so, true. I don't think yeah, that these the politicians water. in particular even believe the shit that they say. I, I think that to the extent they want to criminalize abortion, it's just because they want to control women. That's what this is about. Um, like if I said this earlier, I'll say it again because I think it's an important point. If they really thought abortion was murder, they would treat it that way. Right. They wouldn't make um, exceptions for um, their mistresses, they wouldn't make exceptions for states, you know, oh, well, you know, I believe in states, right? So some states can allow this murder to continue. Like, you wouldn't treat it that way. Like, you don't mm -hmm. actually believe it's murder. Like, you wouldn't be protesting outside of a clinic where they're doing murders. You would storm the clinic, right? It's just, it's also disingenuous. Well, they, they, some people do. Some of them uh, do, but I mean, for the most violent, part, yes. right? 
The it's, it's the are... same thing with if you cared about child's rights, you would care about the second they were born and provide for yeah. the families and the mothers exactly. and, all, and all no that kind of shit, right? At, they, like, they do that. They do that, right? No, we'll take care of you while you're pregnant. Are you guys doing that for real? Are you providing these mothers with the health care that they need? Are you doing... Because mm -hmm. right after that baby... They want to cut wick. It's like, yeah. They want to cut wick stems. After that, <laughs> after that, they're like, yeah, you're on your own. Like, oh, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're providing you with the resources. After that baby comes out, these babies are on their own. Some of them are put into systems. Some of them, like... It's it's, it's ridiculous. Some of them are born with defects. Some of them, it's so many different things and they're not thinking about that. It becomes expensive for a poor mom to have mm. to take care of, like, just think about that. Like, they don't. They don't. And they, America will have this whole idea, oh, you know, we care about the kids, you know, America love the kids. And then all of a sudden kids come out and there's, like, so much that all these kids that they were saying you must have, you know, will support you through your pregnancy. Then babies come out, ain't no help. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. It blew my mind like two years ago to find out that you have to pay to give birth in the U.S. and I and then, like the average know. is seven thousand to twelve thousand dollars. Very was expensive. expensive. Yeah, because in Canada expensive. you don't you don't pay out of pocket for your birth, right? Don't and rub I, that I, in I was, our faces. Well, okay? I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm doing that because I was like, but that's insane to me how mm. you can actually expect people to go bankrupt and yet constantly talk about how pro life you are and how much the sanctity yeah. of birth and all this kind of stuff. It, it's going to cost you ten thousand dollars though. Like, mm -hmm. if you only have like four hundred dollars in your bank account, how do you do it? What do you do? Do you just yeah. give birth at home? Do you just give like you just say fuck it? Do you, do you like? Again, no, but um, you'll you'll be able to do it. So many parents, <clears throat> so many parents, literally you use what they can like do what they need i know my mama was sick and tired of getting pregnant that lady been pregnant since she was 17 she just pregnant every day right fertile right um so with her being uh you know um you know a migrant here her not having a like she worked at a hot dog stand when she first got here and i saw the stresses of having like four kids in the house that were all under, the, we were all around the same age, but her trying to do all of that was a struggle with my dad trying to make sure he holds down a job. Um, so they don't make it easy for you anyway. Like mm -hmm. you already got to do six jobs. We had to be home. We had to be home. And this is back in the day. So it's, it was my sister who was what, maybe four years older than me, locked the door while we have to make this money to make sure that you guys can eat or whatever while when we were younger. And it took years for us to really see, um, you know, like uh, something really take place in our lives when it came, like, I mean, like until I was like 15 or something, but I know a friend of mine who was in the system, she came here to visit her family. Same thing. It was locked the door. They didn't have money to put the baby in a babysitter or whatever the case may be. And if we were at babysitters, they were babysitting us illegally. Right. So um, she went to the door and there was a caseworker. The neighbors told and there was a caseworker. And my friend who was from Haiti didn't speak English at the time. The system took her. So her family was in Haiti. She lost contact with her family in Haiti wow. because the system took her. And she's been in the system ever since in her whole entire life. She doesn't know her real last name. They didn't, they don't, they changed it, first of all. And then her, the, she didn't have a real social security. They changed her. They did this overnight. They changed her birth date and everything. And she became um, a part of the system. Um, so they don't take care of kids. They just put, throw you in a system or whatever the case may be. America does not care about children. They want to act like they do. They don't care mm -hmm. about people being parents for real. They want to act like they do. They will help you up until when that baby comes out, you're on your own. And then with kids, we're going to throw them into whatever system, knowing that the you know, these foster care people, uh, they sometimes these they they create trauma for these children and they're just getting a check. And so it's like they're we're not really curating spaces for these kids to really go into somewhere where they it's actually a fitting family. They're not gonna do none of that work. It's just this is a Haitian kid, like we took her away from her family. They don't give a damn. They don't care. America does not truly care about what the things that they, they care about. And one thing is about children. They do not care. I, I don't see that. I, they don't care about children because if they, they did, programs like WIC or whatever wouldn't uh, be up for people. Like I know, I think uh, expires at a certain age and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, did something change for the parent? Are we checking in or whatever the case? No. As soon as the baby turns a certain age, wick is over. You're on your own. You're on your own. We no longer, you can't get the benefits anymore. It's just that type of, that's what it is. So Yeah. Yeah. It's a barbaric 
ruthless system. It's shitty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, happy way to end the show. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Super happy episode. I know, right? Sorry. Sorry, y'all. Look, my bad. We came on. I tried to, I tried to, I started Doomer too earlier. We talked about like Sotomayor retiring and stuff. That's true. That was, that was, that was right out of the gates. That was the opening. Yeah. Yeah. So we started Doomer. So, okay. I'm sorry about that. Well, you know what? (laughs) No, don't Maybe the super chats will be happier. And good. You're going to have to read them because David's gone. He has, yeah. His baby was crying. So, look, everybody, it's just a night for the kids to just start hacking up. People tired, <laughs> kicking, crying. I have a bird. My, my sister's bird. Um, it's in the cage behind me. Um, I got it covered up because oh, he's a little fussy. Yeah, it's a um, parakeet, but budgie, whatever. But oh, first, yeah. I want to free it every day. kind of see it. I, yeah. I, I want to free it every single day <laughs> um, because I hate that he's in a cage right mm. i just don't like it i feel like he doesn't mm. belong here um y'all know how i am about the birds uh, i don't know I, <laughs> like he's from his native to australia why would they bring this baby over here like and breed them and then create this baby and then now he's in a cage and i keep him by the window so that he can get feels sometimes i sit him mm. in the cage outside so he can get feels but then I feel like he gets sad when he sees other birds flying and he has just but so much room and he can only fly from like here to here. And oh I, if I take him out of the cage, I ain't going to run after no bird in this apartment. He's going to die. <laughs> He's going to die. And so, yeah, so I feel so bad. So I just kind of like, um, you know, if I leave the room sometimes too long, he'll start chirping. And then when I just come and just sit there, he'll, you know, calm down or whatever the case may be. We're best friends. So um, that's my sister's bird. That's cute. His name is Rocky. I'll put a picture of, of, of him on on YouTube. So yeah, I guess I, you can see him, but yeah, I just, I, you know, I get really sad about it. And you know, when they, when my Angelou said, I know why the cage bird sings. I know why this cage bird sings. Okay. <laughs> the baby is sad. I, it just makes me so sad, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Um, okay. So I'll go through Rebecca's. Yeah. Uh, definitely don't let that bird definitely don't let that bird go though. Cause that bird would be, would, would not. He wouldn't make it, it. Would, outside. He wouldn't he would make die. it. He wouldn't make it. To, he, this is not his environment. Like he die. would get eaten. He would die. Yeah. yeah fair. Uh, oh, fam, so I can't say be, for the super so, chats so, so, this time. I gotta, I gotta take care of my own pet. Um, hey, y'all just, gotta, it's, all right. Right. it's always my pet anyway. I love you, Lance. Have a good one. All right. Peace. Love y'all. Love you. The chat's. Oh. All righty. Oh, oh my just, God. That's too said, close. We just said, fuck it. Dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So this is the first one, Rebecca. Oh my God. Loving the crossover, Lizzie Bennett. Thank you so much. Uh, next one. Um, infinite content, two ballot initiatives in Florida of note. Question three is legalizing weed. And question four is about abortion access up to 24 weeks. Make sure to choose wisely. Definitely. Um, mm, Rimuru. Rimuru. Tempest, the slime dragon. Thank you so much. I missed the Benjamin P. Diction show, but I'm not stopping my support of you. I know. he He's still doing his thing. It's just different, right? He's still doing a show, but it's just different. So if you follow his page, he's putting out content, you know, um, as much as he can, but, uh, and it's still the BPD show. It's just kind of different than what you're used to. So keep keep supporting. He, he, he posts on there. Funky Flash, thank you so much. Tigwick. <laughs> Tigwick. <laughs> Love what you bring to leftist mafia, Rebecca. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. AK, thank you so much for your super chat. The emo dragon donating to get Rebecca on the YouTube. On YouTube, look, I put the in front of everything. The Kroger, the Publix. Yeah. <laughs> uh, donating to get Rebecca on YouTube full time. Uh, Fund. Appreciate your contributions to Leftist Mafia. Like it or not, and Olay and friends. Love you, mean it. Thank you. That's why I used to say, y'all. Love you, mean it. Thank you so much, Emo Dragon. Appreciate it. I'm trying to get free too. It's coming. We're trying to help. Well, it'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. We got to put into existence. It'll happen. It'll happen. Yeah. I have some ideas actually. All right. Look, you know, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Cass, thank you. New job, unfortunately, night shift. On my first break, may not be able to make Leftist Mafia live further on. Oh, because they trying to keep you. See, they trying to change your shift and you can't even come with us, but you can always catch us after. Keep up the great work, though. Thank you so much. Uh, I, is it, uh, are you, it's Spanish. I feel like this is Spanish. Um, and I'll get it later. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Gatling combo. Thank you so much. Can't send too much. Listen, that's enough. You supporting is enough. So don't feel like you, you force this in, but you supporting is enough. And I thank you for your super chat. Can't send too much, but it's something. Thank you all so much for having empathy for service workers. Absolutely. Prairie Fire. Y'all just, I didn't know I had all these other I had too. Uh, Prairie Fire. I needed to give you money. Otherwise, Matt will call me out for overcharging poor folks for food. Prairie Fire. All right. So uh, <laughs> to give some context there, Kowalski was called into my show last night and was telling me how, um, you know, when when the, uh, the world food crisis that, you know, because of everything going on was going on. Uh, farmers here in the U.S. were doing quite good, and now that that's subsiding, and that's a positive thing for everybody else. Uh, you know, the 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 farmers here are charging uh, their their prices are coming back down to earth. Mm. So I was uh, I was uh, you know I was uh, you know poking mm. at them for mm -hmm. uh, taking advantage as a rich farmer in Nebraska, <laughs> 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 charging and taking advantage and upping his prices. <laughs> See, uh, so Prairie Fire, you must are you a, are you a farmer? That's uh, so what I'm picking up. He is a farmer in Nebraska. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow! So you were coming after Prairie. Well, thank you, Prairie. I I appreciate it. And and you know, uh, am I poor folk? I don't know. But um, thank you so much. Listen, I y'all know I'm not here for a long time. Um, but I'm here for a good time. I did want to address, you know people who are coming at me, you know, on the Twitter or whatever the case may be. They gave me a lot of love. I don't really post on Twitter like that. Who's coming um, at you? But because you I posted a, a video. Listen, if y'all follow me on anything else, y'all know that outside of anything, I dress the way I dress. It is what it is. But because I posted me at dinner, right? I don't post much on um, Twitter, but I posted this. And people were saying like, you know, showing less is is, is better as a woman. Like, Wait, you know. that picture that you, I thought it was, a, it, you looked so good. Thank I don't understand. So and that's usually, that, that, like, that's like my everyday wardrobe. Like when I, well, I mean, I wear my t-shirts, of course, oh, and yeah, stuff people. like that. But when I go out, it's always up and it's stuck. Like, that's how I've always dressed. Like, you know, but it's funny, but like people have a problem with that. And it's not everyone, it's just a few people. But I was just like, dang, like people, I, I'm a woman, right? And I and I am 33 years old. So that's the grown and sexy age. Y'all get over it. People have titties, yeah. people have ass, people have legs, people have ears, people have eyes. Get over it. Like it is what, what it is. What is wrong with people? people I just, are, oh, they, they were mad at me. Uh, they were, never they were upset. Hey. They were upset, but it's okay, y'all. I cannot handle these people. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, you know, that's how I know they don't follow me much because if you did, you if, if, if it wouldn't be a thing. But Everyone who's watching, go harass anyone who was talking to Rebecca <laughs> negatively. No, I can't say harass. Uh, <laughs> defend don't Rebecca. Attack. Don't go attack the people. But, you know, I love you guys. And Matt, somebody said this, though, and this will be my last thing and I'm out. You know, because I ain't never been on your show. Y'all, I ain't never been on your show. Mm. <laughs> Look, I don't like I've never been on your show. So, you know, you figure that out and and, and you make it happen. Make it happen. Like that. So, but other than that, um, I love you guys, mean it. You guys enjoy. I know how you guys are gonna be on here till five in the morning. So, <laughs> you know, it's the floor is yours. Love you guys, mean it. Take care, uh, Rebecca. Yeah. You gotta gotta get you on my show now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay, so uh we'll have to do David's too. Here's what I'll do. I'll just read them all. Uh, and then if it comes to one that's yours, just stop me. All Does right. that work? Just to make yep. it a little bit easier. Uh, um, like the mask, right? Like Jim Carrey and the mask. Somebody stop, stop me. Stop me. <laughs> there we go. Uh, okay. Uh, narrator. Oh, that's for me. That's for okay. me. Uh, narrator with a membership super chat. Member for nine months. Thank you, Narrator. Biden supported genocide for six months, but if he supports it for six more, I might not vote for him. That's the bar. One year of genocide, a leftist. I mean, um, and listen, I don't like it either. Um, you know, as someone who lives in New York, my vote doesn't matter, so I could just not vote for him. But if you are in a swing state and that's how you want to strategize and that's your how you want to vote, I mean, you withhold your vote. And if he doesn't support it anymore, uh, that's a, a reason to vote for him. I mean, it's it sucks, but that's what it is. I, I, yeah, I you don't it. want to shame people for making that shitty decision in a swing state. You know, they like nobody wants Trump to win. And so if they're voting for Biden, you know, despite all of uh, their um reservations about that like they're not happy about it they're just doing 
what they need to do to stop Trump. Like, I, I really don't think you should shame people for doing that. Uh, like, I'm and against I mean, voter honestly, shaming when it comes to third parties, but also people who, you know, vote for the lesser of two evils. I think that people do what they can with the system that we have. And I feel like we really should give each other more, like, grace in that regard. And I mean, if, listen, if, um, you know, I'm not saying you give him any credit or give him any props, because obviously 30,000 plus people dead in Gaza. Yeah. Um, but if his change of heart due to that pressure, not change, I don't want to even say change of heart, if his change of um, uh, strategy with Israel on Israel and Palestine is due to that public pressure, then I mean, um, I would say stopping another 30,000 people from being killed is a good thing. And certainly I don't think Trump would be uh, pressured in that same way. Yeah, it's it's a bad situation either way. So, you know, I'm really uh, I'm I'm pressing people to try to be empathetic because it's you know, I'm not going to vote or shame people either way. Like if you are in a swing state, you know, you're making a different decision than those of us in like deep blue or deep red states. So it's you know, it's tough. You do what you can. Um, infinite content with five dollars. I had this idea for judicial reform, lifetime appointment, but 10 year term limits for the Supreme Court, then back to a lower court, a circuit appeals court uh, district. Uh, you know what? I, I like those kinds of ideas. Uh, another thing that I saw as like an alternative was that like you don't have any um, any Supreme Court justices serving longer than a year. They just kind of rotate between circuit court judges uh, just randomly. But I like your yeah, I like your recommendation too. I, I think that the current system is absolutely just it's so stupid and ridiculous uh javier ramirez with a five dollar super chat hey matt love your show thank you so much javier i i i appreciate it um you know i i hope to be doing more stuff too so there'll be more content to love soon it'd be pretty funny if i start doing more content and then i get a five dollar super chat at during the first leftist mafia after i put out the new content and it's like hey matt hate your new content <laughs> <laughs> go back to what you were doing yeah go back to what you were doing just just the once a week live stream that's all i want <laughs> uh this one i'm assuming is for david dole ryan lennon fan says pierre polaver our likely next prime minister in canada has voted against abortion repeat repeatedly Plus, why was a Canadian elementary school playing the OJ trial? LOL. Yeah, that's funny. For those who don't know, David Dole actually put out a video today. I watched it. It was really good about the polls showing that the conservative party is probably going to have a majority in Canada. And young people support this, even though Pierre Polivere, the leader of the uh, Canadian party, he's like against gay rights, against abortion. So they're voting against their own self-interest. But it's probably because like... They also live in a first past the post system like the United States. Like they have multiple parties, but it's still winner take all. So that system kind of leads to those type of suboptimal results. Also, hold on. Before you leave that super chat, I just want to say I too assumed it was for David Dole because of the topic of conversation. So I didn't even bother looking. But then <laughs> as I was looking to see what my next one was, I saw that this was indeed for me. So thank oh, you. Oh, was Ryan it really? Lennon fan. Yeah, thank you, Ryan Lennon fan, for the uh, super chat, the uh, membership super chat. Member for nine months. Wow, appreciate it. Okay, Colt Dog. Um, this is for me. Colt Dog okay. with a super chat. I've been loving seeing Ben tear up the right on X. I got to say. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. I even see a Ben Dixon reply on Twitter, aka X, and I'm like, whew, he went there. <laughs> he does, he pulls he, he no holds nothing punches. back. Yeah. I fucking love He's like probably the best follow on Twitter, hands down. And I gotta say, what it makes it extra hilarious is I'm pretty sure his, like, his, his, like, uh, profile name is like Pastor Ben or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, like, <laughs> Pastor Ben, and then it's like, oh, uh, whoa, okay. <laughs> it's it's so good. Yeah, he he's my favorite. Uh, this one's for me from Bay Photo with one ninety nine. Thank you, Bay Photo. Mike, was your blockbuster full of free AOL CDs? No. So I actually started working there when broadband was more common. Um, so no. Otherwise, we probably would have played with them and used them as like frisbees in the store when it was slow. Uh. 
Rimuru Tempest the Slime Dragon, $15. Thank you so much for the generous super chat. I love seeing Ben Dixon. Yeah, me too. Always happy to have Ben on. Uh, Darnell Henriquez with 199, thank you, says it starts with rubber bands and ends up and ends with a pain king. Yeah, referring to my uh, homeo homeopathic gay conversion therapy. Yeah, true. Although I didn't do the rubber band thing for more than like a couple of days because it wasn't really working, of course. Uh, Tony Rizzo, this might be for you. Is this for me? Tony Rizzo with a membership super chat. Um, the parasitic band of Dingus's podcast, the PBD. Very good. I like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, featuring waters are upset over an amount of money that is a rounding error to them. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. Yeah, that's a really great point. I mean, 40K is, a, is 40K is like alone is not something you would live on but 40k if like someone was to give one of us 40k right now it would be life changing yeah <laughs> yeah you're right it is a it is a rounding error yeah it just but, like god yeah. they're probably multi multi millionaires i mean jesse waters makes 5 5 million a year pbd he probably makes about the same just god so ridiculous so unearned cuz they're so stupid i think this one's for you too Yep, Tokyo Hans with a super chat, a thousand yen. I have no idea how much that equals in dollars. Probably a thousand dollars. I gotta assume a thousand dollars. A thousand dollar super <laughs> chat. Um, glad to see the eclipse slash rapture didn't take you all. Sadly, it didn't seem to take anyone out on the right. The only person it did take out seems to be OJ for some reason. Actually, <laughs> um, it did. This is a really crazy story. I really should have brought it up earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, oh, what's this, per hold on, um, give me one second. There is a story in the Los Angeles Times, a, an astrology influencer, um, that, uh, uh named Dan Danielle Johnson, um, she apparently and, and apparently she was a, a a big figure on like black twitter she has like over a hundred thousand followers she apparently has her like her she's been like mentally deteriorating going through a mental illness over the past couple of years and became a QAnon person and sharing right-wing conspiracies and stuff and on the day of the solar eclipse she thought something was going to happen because of it. She thought like Armageddon was going to happen or something. So she stabbed her husband to death in his bed, took her kids, her two kids in the car, threw them out of the car while she was driving, killing the, the baby. There was an older child and a baby. Oh, my God. And then she crashed her car as hard as it could into like a tree, killing her. So because of the eclipse... And this woman suffering from mental illness and the right wing conspiracy theory she was reading online from the QAnon cult, um, she took out three fourths of her family, including herself. Oh, my uh, God. So, yeah, actually, someone did die, uh, not directly due to the eclipse, but uh, because of conspiracy theories surrounding it. That's a horrifying um, story. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Also, I'm not much of an eclipse guy. <laughs> like uh, it happened and I my kids got the glasses at school and we stayed outside to look at it and they were excited about it and it was like cool for like the split moment that like you see the you know the the moon in front of the the earth mm -hmm. and that you know the the black circle in front of the sun like that was cool I, I'm, I'm assuming if you were in like the totality region it just going like completely dark for a couple minutes during the day uh, like darker than it is when like clouds go by um, I guess that would have been pretty cool, but like for me, I'm not really, I wasn't too, but I wouldn't like travel for it. I'm not like, there yeah. are pe pictures of people like on the floor, like having like a, a, an awakening and a, a, oh, an out of body on. experience. It's just like, I, I just don't, it's just not, uh, it's cool. It's cool. Mm -hmm. I think science is cool. I'm just not a big, I'm not a big space guy. I'm not a big space guy. Oh, really? I love space. See, in I'm 2017, I was able to see it much better, um, and it was actually clear out. Uh, this time, I think, it, you know, Pacific Northwest, we had like 20% viewing. I didn't notice shit. It was completely cloudy. 
But, you know, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I, I don't know why people make it out to be like some spiritual experience. It's just really cool. But, you know, like, it's like, uh, like, like, like uh, that William Shatner thing when he went up with the uh, with Jeff Bezos to space and then he came back down. That speech he had really resonates with me. Like, like you, you look into space and like I, I, to me, like the, the that is not attractive to me, like just nothingness. I'll I'll, I'll experience mm. nothingness for all eternity in a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hopefully more than a couple of decades. <laughs> yeah, a number of decades you're not that old. Uh, in a number of decades, I'll be experiencing nothingness for all eternity. Yeah. So for me right now, I actually quite uh, enjoy Earth. I think it's quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. The trees, the sky, the, the water, the fresh air, gravity. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand, like, seeing Earth from space, that could really change you because, you know, you're seeing just existence raw, right? There, you're not seeing any borders. You're not seeing you, – you, you're, like, completely detached from, like, the day-to-day. -day. It's just human beings on a planet floating randomly through nothingness. You know, it's, it's, it's a really – it could be like life changing or at least change your perception or your mentality. So I do understand that, but I feel like you shouldn't so, need to see the planet to have that type of mentality, right? right. Like uh, it should be obvious. Like uh, someone, someone in the chat mentioned the, the Charlie DeGeneres that the people not so much, but you know what? That's, that's, that's the one thing I actually, and I, I, I posted this online. This is the one thing I really enjoyed about the eclipse more so than the eclipse itself. People, came out of their buildings, came out of their homes. I, I in my neighborhood, walking the kids home from school, everyone was standing outside. Uh, who mm -hmm. could? People standing outside of stores. I saw like, you know, uh, uh, workers stopped and looking up with, you know, and, and uh, outside of my building, I, mm -hmm. there were more people standing outside of my building at the same time than I've ever seen. I, I love that. I, I actually like yeah. in terms of like, like, reminiscing on like the past or like the golden like I, nothing's ever better than the now and then obviously then the future things will always mm -hmm. pro progress so i'm like one of those people but in terms of mm -hmm. like one thing i do wish i was alive for and like the the like you know i guess in like the like it, it reminds me of the twilight episodes of the twilight zone i guess like the mm -hmm. 50s and 60s the one thing that seems nice in that is that like people were always outside kids were always like in the street playing baseball mm -hmm. uh riding their bikes it, i mean maybe that's just in the show is but my my parents tell me sort of the same thing too mm -hmm. i miss people in neighbors interacting as much as they used to and yeah. to see that during the eclipse was actually the coolest part of the eclipse people outside talking mm -hmm. congregating I like that a lot. It feels good to also experience things together, you know, kind of just like you don't think about, um, you know, people's political disposition or who they are. It's just, hey, we're experiencing this cool thing together. We're human beings. And I think there's something really cool about that, too. So, yeah, I, I, I understand that. OK, hey, listen, don't get me wrong. I certainly dislike uh, greatly a, a quite a few number of specific people. But people as a whole, I, I like to think we're, you, you know, we're good. Yeah, we're products of our environment largely, right. too, I think. For better or worse. Uh, okay. So uh, Izzy Sanchez with $5 says, Jesse Waters not taking how many hours are distributed to employees plus taxes and owe oh, rent, electric bill, cell phone beer, bill, uh, food, etc. Sheesh. Yeah, you know what it is, Izzy? He, he is so detached. He hasn't thought about these things in forever, right? He, like, he has, like, he doesn't have infinite money, but for the most part, for all intents and purposes, he doesn't ever have to think about these things. So he's not thinking about bills. He's not thinking about food. Um, he's not thinking at all about, like, what a regular person goes through because he's so attached he has so much money i mean five million a, a year he's a multi-millionaire to talk like he does what we do easiest job ever we do it much better by the way but like five million a year like you never have to worry about anything your your family's taken care of and so he just he can't empathize at all with like the regular person so that's why he's so out of touch when you're in that when you're in that like rich elitist bubble for so long like, it doesn't just make you detached. Like, I actually think to an extent, the richer you become, the more you experience brain rot. It's like, you know, looking I'll, at some of I'll these people. Say, I'll say, and let me just say that this is my, I just realized my super chat. Thank you, Izzy. <laughs> um, but um, I actually do think 
I, I don't think he considers taxes. That's absolutely right. Yeah. But they def they definitely consider those other expenses. They just don't think you should be able to afford rent if you're working at these places. Like they literally don't mm -hmm. think you should be able to. Like they 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 realize that part of it. They definitely don't consider the taxes. That you absolutely got right. But mm -hmm. I really do think that because they they say it, you shouldn't be able to uh afford rent by yourself as an industry worker because that's not a job where you should be living you shouldn't have the you shouldn't have the privilege of being able to afford to uh, live on your own that's because you shouldn't be there it's, this job is just for teens and people starting out that's how they really think mm -hmm. yeah for resto oh, this one's for me yes i'm sorry I'm just taking them all. Uh, for resto of Inter <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, what's the, what's the casino uh, uh, term I'm looking for? I'm, ro uh, I don't, I can't remember. Um, I don't know. I know what term there you're you referring to, right but I cannot. Tables, I think. Yeah. Okay, that was not the one I was thinking of. Never mind. <laughs> uh, for resto Montero with a ten dollars super chat. Years ago, my old army buddy posted a homophobic Facebook post on Pride Day. I started fighting him in the comments, and his friends chimed in. Didn't you blow X guy? He replied, yeah, but I didn't like it. Um, wow. <laughs> Honestly, not super surprising. I mean, listen, I know people, um, you know, experiment as when they're young and try different things. But I mean, you, I feel like you got to at least be bi if you've done that. Like, I listen. Yeah. I've never as, as a guy who knows 100 percent that I'm totally straight as I'm only attracted to women. Um, uh, I, I, I've never had a moment where I was, exp I wanted to experiment with blowing a guy. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's not something you accidentally, uh, do or, or, or say you want to try out unless you're, unless you, you, you're bi. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But if you're going to be posting homophobic posts on Facebook, then I mean, and, and you blew a guy. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> right? Yeah. It, it's like, it, same for me. It's like, you know, I've never experimented with a woman, I have no interest in women whatsoever. I'm like, I'm I'm a six on the Kinsey scale. Matt's probably a one, I'm assuming. So like, you know, there's there's gonna be, I think a lot of gray area, a lot of people in between. So yeah, if you were willing to do that, I don't think you're necessarily super straight. <laughs> Hold on, Uncle Gumball though said, uh, quoting as if I'm saying this, getting blown though, that's a different story. <laughs> 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 no, uh... never. No, never had any z z zero throughout my entire life. I've never even had a moment. Uh, zero uh -huh. uh, attraction to to, to guys. Uh, I'm not even attracted to myself. I mean, <laughs> guys are gross, man. <laughs> guys are disgusting. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Seriously, how could even women be into this? I mean, I don't get it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Zia Spots, $3. Thank you, Zia. Petition to make Jesse Waters work at McDonald's. Listen, I've always said this half seriously. I think that every single person should be required to work in the service industry for at least one year. Um, I, I think that that would make society a better place because if you are on the receiving end of that job, of, of a Karen, of somebody who's yelling at you, um, it just, it changes your perspective, right? feeling belittled, feeling like people think that they are superior to you. Um, so yeah, I, like I agree. I think that Jesse Waters should work at McDonald's. So that way he could see, oh, this is actually really difficult work. And I don't think that he could survive working at McDonald's. You know, if he like, if he was forced to get a different job, like, I mean, he's, he's never going to be in that position, but like, he wouldn't be able to survive working at a fast food or a retail place. He just couldn't. He needs to be in these little like elitist jobs where you talk, read off a teleprompter. Um, not not because he's better, but because he couldn't handle it. Uh, Lou Isms, 199. In 1995, I worked for 725 an hour with only 300 rent. Wow. Yeah, it, it's crazy how much the cost of living has, has skyrocketed. It's 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 really really startling. Yeah, rent in the nineties. I mean, I I was 
too young in the 90s to be renting but mm -hmm, you hear from people that you know that you know the fact that it's, it was still in the three figures in the 90s seems insane like it, it, yeah because that because that means it maintained that general three figure number <laughs> uh for for quite some time do you know what i mean like and then suddenly mm -hmm. it, it it jumped a lot and continues to jump a lot yeah yeah like if you're paying 300 in the 90s then like what were they paying in the in, in like the 60s the 70s the 80s like it, actually it i been... found on reddit somebody posted an ad of homes for sale uh, i think it was from like 1960 something and for like 17, a thousand i think or something like that for like a beautiful home well there was so the ones that i saw it was a three bedroom uh for like Seventy thousand, and the mortgage I want to say was around like two hundred a month, uh, which is just—I mean, it's inconceivable, right? It's crazy, man. I, I mean, don't know where that was from, like what area the, of the country, but still. For for me, for me personally, that's like, you know, I'm I'm a very lucky person. I I, I have a, a wife, two kids, oh. everyone's healthy. It's uh, knock on wood, obviously. <laughs> Um, but like the one thing out of reach that is like the goal in life is to just, uh, for me personally, I know some people don't want to do this, is just own a home. Nothing crazy, just a basic home. And that's because I'm just my sick of rent, sick of mm -hmm. the property being owned by a landlord and someone else having a say over what you can and can't do. I got a dog and I had to pay them hundreds of dollars in a f in fees just just to have a dog in the place where I live, like my own home. Mm -hmm. Like I hate that so much to live under the power of someone else. So like for yeah. me, that's like the 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 one unachievable. Maybe one day, who knows? Far away, that's like the one thing left. And like the fact that it would have been much easier to obtain even just uh, a decade ago is, uh, well, probably more than a decade ago, maybe two decades ago is so angering. If I was just born yeah. a little bit earlier, you know, like. Well, that's what, that's why so many people now don't even pretend like the American dream is alive. Cause that's like the American dream, right? Like you go through the steps, you get a job, you get a family, you buy a home and then, you know, life is peachy keen. Uh, not, not really, but you know what I mean? Like, now that's not even like the, the bare minimum of what is uh, thought of as the American dream is no longer attainable for the overwhelming majority of the population. Right. Mike, I'm, I'm sick of eating the bugs. I'm sick of owning <laughs> nothing and being happy. I want to own something, Mike. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, so this one is a membership uh, super chat. This might be for you uh yeah uh bay photo member for nine months thank you so much uh jesse waters doesn't even understand that hourly employees often don't receive consistent hours or have full-time status so twenty dollars yeah. times 40 is kind of wrong i actually mentioned this mm -hmm. I, I did a much longer piece on it on my show last night on the live stream you know on, on this show we, we we cover things quicker number of voices voicing their opinion so we don't always get to every single point before we move on to the next topic but um i did bring this up like these jobs are not guaranteed 40 hours either um they could be working um much less hours one week you know it, it's totally dependent on a, on a scheduled basis what, by what their manager gives them and while obviously they would be making more money some weeks these guys are making and gals are making much more are working much more than 40 hours like 80 hour weeks mm -hmm. and you know 20 dollars 80 times 20 when you're working 80 hours like it's fucking ridiculous like you're not it's not worth it like i mean obviously they got to do it they need the money but it's not like for your health and everything it's not a good a good, a good thing to do yeah we shouldn't be spending like the overwhelming majority of our days and most of our existence at these jobs making money for corporations and that's just like on principle like we should just have more leisure time but if we're not going to have leisure time we should also be able to fucking survive and the fact that people cannot survive off the wages that they're getting it just makes it so much more egregious like how can you how can you think that the system works uh, it only work, works if you're rich it feels like you're working like it's working you know if you're a rich person like Jesse Waters, but 
for the normal person. It doesn't work. Uh, Asa with $2. Uh, thank you. Asa says, have you all seen Civil War? I'm going to watch it soon. Uh, you know, I, uh, I really want to see that. I might check it out this weekend. Uh, one thing that I saw that kind of gave me pause is yes, they credit the Andy thing. No. Um, and there was another right winger they credit as well. I guess they used Helen the footage something. Or something. I'm not too familiar with her. She's some, yeah, uh, same. Uh, she's some British right winger. So, you know, they, they, yeah. who knows what the fuck's going on over there. But um, they, they don't oh, not good credit stuff. Andy. They don't just credit Andy you No. Know, they say he's responsible for some of the footage in the film. Um, which is so fucked which up. Mean, which which means they paid him. Which means they licensed the footage he takes from, and and someone mentioned that Andy No actually posts a lot of footage that he doesn't own from other people. Yeah, I saw so that. They, so so they're wondering if Andy No even owned the footage that he sold the mm -hmm. license to. So they're looking into that. Yeah, I I was gonna see Civil War in movie theaters probably. Um, I don't get to go to the movie theaters often, um, I, but this was one I would just go because it was just. I don't think the movie's gonna be good. I think it's gonna bother Same. me no matter how much they say um, that you know uh, that Texas and California team up to <laughs> to do this. Right. Um, but um, I I I am uh, I don't think I'm paying for the movie after seeing that. I'm not supporting that. I don't care. I, I'll see it when it comes out on streaming because my viewing it won't matter at all to how much they're paying for mm -hmm. the rights for it. But I'm not giving my movie ticket money to them because that does go, that does count. Like your money goes in the, the overall total there. Whereas like when it's on Netflix or whatever, Netflix just pays them the fee and then it doesn't really matter otherwise. Yeah. I So I feel like um, it's going to be bad. I'm really curious about it. Um, but that seeing the Andy No thing has definitely like I have reservations about seeing it and giving my money to that. Um, yeah, I, I like just, if it was just if it was just like again if it was just a credit to him like a thank you to him I would still be like oh what the fuck. But yeah. they thank him for the footage, which means unless he gave it to them for free, which I highly doubt, um, and I don't think they would do that anyway for like just for or, or like like. For, Keep making sure they were doing everything on the up and up so they don't get sued later on. Mm -hmm. They almost assuredly paid him to license the footage, and I'm not supporting anyone who pays for that. Yeah, which which tells me that this, I re, like my my presumption was that the movie is going to be very like milk toast centrist, like hey we should all get along or some shit like that. Uh, now I'm actually uh, thinking I wouldn't be surprised if the film was fascist. Like why would you? use andy knows like if you're if you're making a piece oh, without about a this, doubt they mentioned with, without you know. a doubt i guarantee you 100 percent they mention antifa in a negative way in this movie as if like they were part yeah. of the civil war i bet they don't like you know i, I don't want to completely say what they don't you know what they do and do but uh, do and don't mention because i don't even see the movie but mm -hmm. almost assuredly if they took got, got footage from andy no then they're men mentioning antifa somewhere in the film i, I mm -hmm. bet i might see it just to uh, talk about it on the show out of morbid curiosity. And again, if it is listen, as bad as I, I, think. I, I don't care necessarily. Like, obviously, if, it, you know, movies that have right wing politics or, or have a bad message, you know, mm -hmm. it sucks. and I'm not necessarily a fan of. But if it's a good movie, I'll still watch it and like judge it from that perspective as well. But this is different. This is they uh, have enriched someone in real life who does these things mm -hmm. by paying them for footage and that's completely different that's much worse if you ask me yeah uh charlie the gentleman the super uh, the membership super chat member for nine months thank you uh charlie uh hey matt annie fitzgerald wants to talk about her run in washington state to anyone who'd be interested yeah i think she she reached out to me um on my stream um let's get her on if we're not yeah, I was gonna anyone say, i was gonna and, say and we should watch then stay yeah yeah um I, I think there's a super chat from her too let's keep mm. going and i'll i'll, I'll okay. say what i was gonna say when we get to her super chat yeah i was gonna say because she sent us a, a chat before um to come on my show but i'm not doing candidate interviews but i think that leftist mafia interviews with candidates is much better uh, because yeah. it's it gives them the the opportunity to talk about their campaign and kind of just be themselves, which is what people want to see. Um, so yeah, I, I I would like to I would like to do that too. Um, let's see here. I think this one is probably for uh, you or David Dole. It's from Snack That's Panther. For, not for me. Nope. Not okay. For me. 
Um, he says, GTSY, Bubba, and Ben. Uh, let me go down. Uh, we have Asa Rosa with $2. Thank you, Asa. GTA 6 by far has the best ha hairstyles for black representation. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the trailer, but I'll check it out again. I'm very, very excited about that. Okay, Emo Dragon, member for three months. Thank you, Emo Dragon. Hey, Mike, hope you're well. See the article about how millennials buying groceries is splurging. Whatever we do, we're a selfish slash ruining society. Yeah, I haven't read the article, but I did see people talking about that, and it's so ridiculous. It was something to the effect of a new trend that millennials are doing, splurging on groceries or some shit. It's like, no, we can't win, right? Like, we're, we're either killing industries, killing the economy, or we're splurging when we're not supposed to. Like, it's just, I don't understand why there's so much hate for millennials, especially because we're not the youngest generation. Like, it's pretty typical for, like, older generations to shit on the youngest generation. Uh, but we're still being shit on. Like, get off I, our, I, our, I, I, our dick and balls. <laughs> I completely I completely agree. Like, that was my first reaction to the article. But there is parts in the article where... Uh, you know, personally, I was just like, oh, you, you, you got to You guys got to shop better. There was this one person who was a single guy in his early 20s who said he spends like one hundred fifty dollars a week on groceries, including like snack foods and stuff like that. And I got to say, like that amount of money is how much <laughs> my family of four spends on groceries. <laughs> so this mm. guy is spending uh, must be getting good snacks and stuff. But you know what? At the same time, though, um, Hundred fifty dollars on food. Like, if you're gonna spend money on something, please. Food should be like the thing you people should be allowed to splurge on. It's yeah. food. You should enjoy what you eat. Um, and you know, and if you want to eat healthy, there are people ways are to be economical. To yeah, there are people ways are to like to have a treat. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, healthy food is often expensive. There, are, I, I think that a lot of us it takes a while to learn how to shop wisely. Um, and to not like waste money and to make food that lasts. But um, yeah, I, I think that like, as you said, Matt, criticizing people over food, I just feel like it's so, why, like, what's the point? <laughs> like, why, yeah. why? I don't get it. I mean, like I said, there's a part of me that like, as someone who is the, I'm the, the, sh the, the guy who shops and is very strict about what you buy based on the best deal possible because that's who I am. <laughs> uh, it was shocking to see uh, a, a single guy spend the same amount I do on my family of four. But again, I'm not going to, you know, uh, knock someone for that. If food should be something you're allowed to splurge on and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, this is... Um, for this is not for me oh wait yes it is for me narrator with a super chat it would be a better ad if biden put half the political capital into protecting abortion access that he has put into arming genociders oh i yeah. agree. i'm sure people on this show will agree but you know what um that ad will probably be probably to most normal people actually probably will resonate more <laughs> <laughs> people yeah. people people don't pay attention to this type of stuff they don't pay I attention wish they to did. policy they don't pay attention to that stuff they, they 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 i mean think about the questions that are asked of people when they decide who to vote for uh, traditionally maybe not with biden and trump because <laughs> but normally it's like oh i who would you have a beer with like that's ludicrous but that's how people think of these things yeah yeah I wish that wasn't the case, but that's uh, that's American politics, unfortunately. Uh, we have Jacqueline Terrell, a uh, member for nine months. Thank you so much. I believe this is for David Dole. That law in Arizona is from 1864. They didn't even become a state until 1912. Yeah, it was uh, during the Civil War, before statehood, before women were able to vote. Uh, it's just so... Uh, it's so uh, ridiculous. They're they're just I don't know what to say. You know, uh, they're clowns. They want to go. And back I just realized to that, that one. I just realized that one was for me too. Thank you, Jack. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being a member for nine months. Really appreciate it. Nine months. Jeez. Uh, K KD, damn it, with a super chat. Uh, white cowboys were called cow hands, and African Americans were pejoratively referred to as cowboys. 
Uh, ah, interesting. I got to say, though, when I was first about to read this super chat, I, I thought I, I was going to read it as white cowboys were called cowards and African-Americans. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. So this one was for Rebecca. I don't know if we read this I, one. I think I might have missed it. Oh, does this? I, I'm not sure. Wow. Yeah, I'm sorry, Andrew. If we miss this during Rebecca, I will uh, let her know. But uh, I'll read it just in case because it doesn't seem familiar to me. Uh, lots of major events this week. Hope everyone stays safe and well. On a positive note, I got a new job. I can now leave a very crappy job for a hopefully less crappy job. That's that is awesome. That is really really important. Good for you, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, that's anytime you could leave a shitty job. Um, that's a good feeling. So good for you. We got a couple more from Andrew. Actually, uh, you got a super sticker, I think, and I got a super sticker. Uh, oh, so we got you, two. Andrew, uh, that's awesome. Mine says you are amazing. Twenty dollars, guy. Yeah, Andrew, thank what? you so much. Mine really says appreciate thanks it. for being you. Oh, I appreciate that. So nice. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Oh, so, 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 someone must have got a really nice new job. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> On the cowboy thing, I just want to go back to that for a second. I just want to say, sure. um, you know, as a kid, though, I got to say, uh, I mean, growing up, uh, well, I mean, growing up in the 90s, really, because I was born in 86, mm -hmm. but I started watching Pee Wee's Playhouse um, as soon as I could, like, I guess, three years old, so that'd be 89. Um, you know, Cowboy Curtis was black cowboy on that show. And seeing that as three years old, at three year old, I, I thought nothing of a black cowboy. It was just, he's a cowboy. He doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. uh, Lawrence Fish Fishburne in that role, amazing. Great character, great role. Paul Rubin's amazing. And obviously, it, being that it was his show, he cast Lawrence Fishburne to be Cowboy Curtis. I think, um, you know, it was super important uh, for to, to cast him in that in that role. I you know I, I think he was one of my favorites on the show too. I mean, other than Pee Wee, Cowboy Curtis was was cool, hmm. is cool I should say. Uh, okay, so this is the super chat from Annie. I think it's for you. Uh, it is for me. Annie Fitzgerald with a ten dollar super chat. Please consider interviewing me, interviewing me for my campaign on Leftist Mafia. I need help promoting my campaign for State House in Washington 38. I want to make history as the first openly disabled LGBTQ elected official in Washington. Annie, you did not need to send me a super chat for this, but we're going to make sure it is the best $10 a campaign has ever spent. Um, let's make sure they don't have someone booked for next week. Uh, the rest of the crew don't have someone booked for next week, and if not, uh, Annie, you you available next Thursday? Yeah, how do we um you can email me, Annie, at Mike at humanistreport.com. Um, or hopefully you can DM us on Twitter. I think we have to be following. I, I know I have to be following. Do you have open DMs, Matt? Um you know what? It's totally possible that Annie sent me a DM. And it got caught in that stupid message requests folder that you don't get a notification for. Mm. Um, yeah, I've never checked. It happens to uh, me all the time. Yeah. Look, I just looked. Yes, there she is. Oh, okay. There um, we go. So we can coordinate. So I, I have your, I will, I will, I'm going to message you right now. It can't be, a. I, I can't think right now. So it's just going to be, hey, um, let's see. Are, I'm going to just say, hey, are you available next Thursday? I'll check if we have an open slot on my end. Oh, she just actually emailed you too. Uh, this just came in. Uh, check your email bender. Emailed you. Okay, we will make it. We'll make it happen, Annie. The word. The, the thing is, like, I'm on Twitter all the time, but unless I don't know how they choose what what gets in the message request folder or not. But if it goes into the main folder, I'll get the notification and I'll reply to you. If it goes in the message request folder, there's no notification. So mm -hmm. I don't know what's in there until I just decide one day to check. And I forget to check that a lot. I I don't know if I even have a message request folder. I think I just have DMs turned off from people who I don't follow. Uh, uh, oh, you went, that's probably what it is. If you don't have a connection with them, they probably put you in the message request folder. Okay. Yeah, because I, I don't want DMs from people on Twitter. Uh, I don't want to see the the... 
slurs and the bullshit. So I get that on Facebook enough and I don't look at them. So <laughs> that's why if you can't contact me, it's that's uh, on Twitter. That's why, unfortunately. Um, oh, I see the email too, Annie, completely unopened in the middle of a bunch of other unopened email. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I DM'd you. We're going to make this happen. I, I don't think we have a guest for next Thursday. Um, I don't think so either. Yeah. If we do, we can still bring any on. Um, even if it's just like a half an hour segment or something, we could still bring her on. We yeah. can make it work. Uh, this is from T types. Uh, no message, just a red and a black box. Um, oh, that was for me. Thank you, T types. <laughs> and Member for one. nine months. I love it. I love all these. I, I think nine months has got to be when I turned the YouTube memberships on because there's so many nine month mm. members. Um, T types with a oh, $5 yeah. super chat. Uh, I'm doing my taxes right now and using your show to dissociate. Yeah. Uh, taxes are uh, not fun to do, but you know, uh, you're getting over, you're getting something back. Got to do I, it. I it and you're, yeah. yeah, you're, you're, you're one of those folks who waits to the almost the deadline. I respect that because you're getting oh, it done. I used to be, I used to be the guy submitting it at the last minute, but this Same. year. I, I need the tax return. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, I think this one um, might be you. Old man, house phone with a ten dollars super chat. I love everyone here except David's fast chat. I watch on Friday so I can two times it. By the way, Binder, give this to Rebecca and Lance. Good seeing uh, Benny Purcell and DJ uh, X. How do you say uh, his, his uh, ex name? exclusive, but with three X's? Got it. DJ. Well, they put DJ X three C. Oh, three DJ exclusive. Oh, okay, got it. Never miss an episode. Oh, I love to hear it. Thank you so That's much, awesome. old man. Uh, I'll uh, I'll certainly pass this on to uh, <laughs> to Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> uh. This one's for you. Um, Tokyo Hans with a super chat. Make sure to interview Annie Fitzgerald, who's running for state house in Washington 38. Damn, Annie's got the grassroots with her right here. This is awesome. I know. Good for you, Annie. Uh, this one's for me, ABS, Anonymous Bastard Society, with $8. Thank you. Did you guys talk about Trump's failure to make Bond? We didn't, but that is... So my thoughts are mixed on this, right? So for those who didn't hear... He's failed to make bond, and now his assets can be seized. The money in his bank account can technically be seized. Um, and the reason why I feel mixed is because even though that's a possibility, I just still can't fathom them doing this to a former president, a rich person, right? Like seizing his assets. I'll believe it when I see it. But um, if it were to happen, oh, that would be it would be so fucking funny. He's going to be so pissed off. I mean, he's already pissed off, right? Um, every squad, every squatter to Trump Tower immediately. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I honestly like I really would love to see this happen, um, but I, I have to see it first, right? Because even though it's a possibility, I don't know. I, I just feel like he's untouchable. We'll see though. But I hope, no, we I hope they seize everything. Hope they seize. Take every. His... Take the clothes off his fucking back. I hope they seize those asset assets. I hope they seize that ass. I hope they <laughs> take his tanner away from him. Uh, just fucking seize everything. I want to see that. I want to see. I want to see every homeless person housed inside Trump Tower and Trump living in yes. a box outside. Yes. Yes. The only. Per, the only. The only. Great. Only homeless person in America. I want Donald Trump. Trump. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, the Phantom 53 able with $2. Thank you. Uh, hey, guys, would you consider New Jersey a swing state? No. Uh, In what yeah. world is it a swing state? You got to be joking, uh, right? Yeah, I would not. Uh, Tokyo Hans. Mike, you too. Make sure to interview Annie Fitzgerald, who is running for state house in Washington 38. Damn. Thank you, Tokyo. A lot of fans and advocates... Or Annie Fitzgerald, and guess what? A oh, member chat FG for you. with a membership super chat. Plus one for Annie Fitzgerald as a guest. 
Wow. You guys got to all obviously like the way you're doing this in the, the chat, like when her campaign is kicking in full gear, you got to all do this, bring the same energy to the phones too, because that's where mm -hmm. the votes are going to come out. Like this is mm -hmm. like, like, let's face it. Like, I don't know how many people watch our show from Washington in her district. Probably yeah. some. And of course, Mike is in Washington, right? You're in Washington, Oregon. right? Oregon. Well, Oregon. it's right above you. So you probably got neighbors. You got more listeners. Yeah. Um, but coming on these shows are great for building, pe you know, a, a campaign volunteer, a, 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 a crew of campaign volunteers who will call people in your district when it be when, when it comes time to do that. So please, uh, if, if you do the work when it comes time, uh, Annie will probably tell us all about where you can sign up and what she needs from you guys uh, when she comes on the show. Mm hmm. Uh, narrator with five dollars. Thank you, narrator. Uh, I don't uphold the du du duopoly. I'm just beholden to it. A leftist. Yeah, I mean, I I think that the problem is that it's baked into the system, and we've got to change the system. Um, we all kind of we're just we're locked into this really shitty two party system, and it's not fair. Um, I I think that I would never criticize. A leftist for voting for the lesser of two evils and i would never criticize them for voting against the lesser of two evils i just think that um you have to understand that people are going to base decisions on their options available right like nobody who supports uh you know no leftist who's voting for joe biden supports him as a candidate it's just an anti-trump vote um, but I respect them if they don't want to do that, you know, um, it's just, it's a shitty situation. So that's my, that's my main take, uh, narrator. You know, I, I, I understand what you're saying though. You know, it's, it's a shitty set of options that we have, but we, we need to change the system. And that's why I've been advocating for that for a very, very long time. Also, I got to appreciate that, uh, that, uh, we are narrators reverse pay pigs. Like people, you know how people pay someone to denigrate them? Like that's like a fetish. Mm -hmm. Narrator pays us to denigrate us. <laughs> like he pays us <laughs> for us to read the quotes he wants us to say to mock us. <laughs> like that's what he wants us to say because that's what he thinks we're saying. I, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I do like narrator. I, I think narrator does have good takes, but I, I, I just, I always like, I like to, I, I try to keep the Michael Brooks mantra in my head, you know, like be ruthless to systems, but be kind to individuals. Like, you know, people in swing states, they don't have a lot of options. I can do whatever I want. I'm in a blue state, right? So I could throw my vote to Claudia de la Cruz um, and not really have to think twice about it. But, you know, in a swing state, totally different story because, you know, we don't want Trump to win. So that means you got to vote for the person who has the best shot of beating Trump, which is Joe Biden. Um, you know, if if you want to stop them, it just, uh, it sucks. Uh, no way. 999. Thank you so much. Do you think the abortion ban is more so government response to us experiencing decline in birth rates? I don't know. I, I think that, um, birth rates, like if they want to fix that, all you do is you, um, actually fix our immigration system because declining birth rates is a, First of all, it's not an issue. Uh, it's only an issue in an economic sense because you need the population to exponentially grow in perpetuity if you want profits to continue growing exponentially in theory. Uh, but this is just Republicans got what they wanted, right? They played the long game. Uh, it's been a 50-year battle ever since Roe v. Wade was decided. They've been trying to get it overturned and they made it happen. So I, I, I think it's very, you know, what you see is what you get here. There's no ulterior motives. They just, they don't think women should have uh, reproductive rights. Uh, okay, I think this one uh, also for me. Uh, thank you, the bitey face puppy guy, $20 Canadian, appreciate that. Instead of complaining about $20 an hour, Jesse Waters and PBD should just be thankful they are not being sent to a re-education camp <laughs> or the gulag, right? I mean, God, I'm so sick of hearing rich assholes talk about what like people who are less fortunate than them deserve because they certainly don't deserve to be in their positions. 
Uh, Ox Pecker with two dollars. Thank you, uh, Mike. Would you still be pro-choice if you were if you were a Krogan? Uh, ooh, I would. I would just because I'm very principled. All right. Uh, a okay. A Krogan is a species of alien from the uh, Mass Effect video game series. Uh, they're, okay. They're like okay. kind of a, uh, like a reptilian, but like big and brawn, like very, very big. Uh, I think Omega Shenron Dragon with a super chat. Fallout show has Rappaport. This is not a drill. Wait, like the Fallout show on, isn't that like on Amazon or something, right? Or oh, right, yeah. Rappaport? So that's, uh, wait, it, it actually does have Rappaport? Why would they have Rappaport in it? Michael Rappaport is in Fallout. He's uh, getting work? Play... What? Why? Uh, oh, that's going to kind of ruin it for me. Uh yeah, he shouldn't he shouldn't be getting work anymore, honestly. Yeah. Uh I think uh, this one's for you. Balthazar 228 with the super chat. Does anyone know what happened to Lance's website? No, something happened to Lance's website? I don't know. Maybe it went down. He maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't know. We gotta let him know. If it's just surf.tv, his... TV, right? Yeah, he, maybe he has to pay his server fee. Pay your bills, Lance. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, next one for Mark you. Mark with a ten dollar super chat. Here is for your first home deposit. <laughs> Left <with us. laughs> I appreciate it, Mark. I appreciate it. Um. You know, I guess if I was a mouse, this would be a good down payment. <laughs> but no, I appreciate the uh, the uh, the super chat and very funny. I appreciate. Oh, it. somebody in the chat says Lance Lance's website is no more. He's not with White Leaf anymore. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, so he's not with. Wait, what? What happened with White? What? What happened? He. I think he said why a while ago. I don't want to speak oh. for him, but he left whatever. Um, whatever. I think it was a co-op that he was with. Yeah, it's the people who do the uh, who run like the website for, for like Vosh and and Keffels and and Dylan Burns. Okay, they have like that private soup, the private chat thing. Like, I, okay, I totally forgot about it, that. It, it always confused me, like I, that there was so many. There was a Twitch chat and then the private chat on their website. It's just too many, too many chats. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a simple guy. But I don't know. To... I don't know why. I don't know why Lance left though. I, I have to ask him. Actually, I'm interested. Um, okay. Uh, okay, we got two left. One for you, one for me. This one's for you. Um, Tokyo Hans with a super chat. As your very first YouTube member, I can confirm. Yesterday was your nine-month anniversary of YouTube memberships. Oh, thank you so much. I had no idea. I appreciate it. Okay. That. Uh, Chris Corcoran with $5. Did you see J.K. Rowling said she wouldn't forgive... Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson for criticizing her transphobic comments. I so I didn't see the article. I saw the headline, which is so funny, uh, because so many people responded saying they didn't apologize to you. So there's nothing that like <laughs> there's nothing to forgive. They're not asking for your forgiveness. They said that you had a bad take. They disagreed with you. They're not apologizing. It's so funny because she is so narcissistic and self-centered that she thinks that they're like even willing to, I guess, uh apologize. I, I mean who the fuck do you but think you also, are? Also, why why would they even need like even need to like even from like let's just say like they 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 felt like they had to from like a, a relationship like a business relationship stand like why they have no business with her like they were in a movie that was based on her books like their career does not overlap with her at all after that movie was done like it's not yeah. like they need her for anything it's not like she's a movie producer or a big movie producer that they like she i mean i know she's in that world now because harry potter was such a important friend but she's not like a major player they get yeah. plenty of work without her first of all daniel radcliffe clearly um is one of those actors and i always respect when an actor does that they have that huge breakout role where they make more money than they could ever imagine and then they just take roles for the love of acting like roles mm -hmm. that appeal to them that might not even be high paying like he does mostly like live theater now because that's what he wants to do he wants mm -hmm. to hone that craft he enjoys doing that and like i totally respect that yeah and, like emma watson she's like beyond like just like an actress now she's like uh, uh like like a 
like a like an an iconic like Hollywood star. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, I think that she probably believes that she made them or something. But like, no, they made Harry Potter what it is, right? Like yeah. your books were right. trash, and the movies made them good. Filled in the shitty little plot holes, disregarded the dumb shit, and like. They are the ones who made it popular. Like when people saw Harry Potter when they were kids and loved Harry Potter, it wasn't because of you. It was because of the characters on the screen that they saw portrayed by Daniel Radcliffe and and Emma Watson. So she just she she needs to get over herself. But she is high on the smell of her own fart. She lives in her castle, so she thinks that the world revolves around her. But she's just even, a, a... even even politics removed. If you're just like a normie who knows no has no idea about who J.K. Rowling is or whatever, she's just the name on the Harry Potter books. When you think of the Harry Potter series, you don't you don't think of her face. You don't know what she even fucking right. looks like. You think of Daniel Radcliffe. You think of Emma Watson. That's who you visualize when you think of Harry Potter in the movies. Yeah, but I mean, she is. Uh... She's unhinged. She is now resorting to Holocaust denial to be transphobic. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me that she's now trying to instigate beef with them, I guess. Uh, I, I need to know, like, if she was asked about this or she just kind of spontaneously decided to say she wouldn't forgive them. But she should go fuck herself. That's what she should do. She's so unhinged. Okay, we got two more that came in for me. Uh, <laughs> narrator with $2. Oh, right. I'm a little piss boy, a leftist. Love you guys still. <laughs> I love you too, narrator. I, I think that your feelings are absolutely justified and I agree with a lot of what you said. But, you know, I try to be more kind to folks who don't have a lot of options because, you know, it's, 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 it's just a shit situation. We're all victims to the system. <laughs> It's a terrible system we live in. Uh, very good. Very good. <laughs> Last minute super chat. I, I, I genuinely I love it. Yeah. But uh, on the on the note of, of piss, we have Jcast with a $2 poo-poo and another $2 pee-pee. Jcast for me. There we go. With a $2 pee-pee. Good night. <laughs> that's, and that's the show. <laughs> well, I got, I got, I got a few uh, Twitch uh, oh. uh, shout outs really quick. Um, Hello, lovely scientists. Resubscribe for one month at tier one. Subscribe for seven months. Thank you so much. Hello, lovely scientist. Tacoma Blues gave out a community gift sub. Thank you so much, Tacoma Blues. And Robot Monkey Cat resubscribed for one month at tier one. They've been a subscriber on Twitch for 29 months. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, Robot Monkey Cat says, anyone in Austin can find me at the Staple Independent Media Expo this weekend at the... Pow float table. Save this message for the cool cats who stay till the end of the super chats. Ah, interesting. Hmm. Cool. I'll have to look that up. Pow float table. Pow float. I have no idea what that is, but I'll check it out. Check it out. Um, all right. Who are we raiding? All right. Cool. Uh, oh, who should we raid? Right. I almost forgot. Who should we raid? Who's on right now? Yeah. Uh, we've got Cosmopolitics. We've got Riverboat Jack. We've got Actual Jake. We've got uh, oh, I a see small Humanist reports on right now. Yeah, I was gonna say we have a small streamer, Hassan, Hassan Abi. I've never heard of him, but um, right. a little bit obscure. Uh, Amy C3, Trihex is on. Uh, there's a lot of options. Uh, chat, who do, who do we want to send uh, all of you on Twitch to? Yeah, you tell us. Oh, we got one more uh, super chat, by the way. Is that for me? Or oh, actually, we got two more. Uh, I got one oh. from Asa, too. This is for oh, me, this... B Buccaneer, with a $10 super chat. The motive behind the anti-abortion is racism, immigration, and the control of women's bodies. Dr. Horatio Storer yep. and the American Medical Association in the mid-1850s created the anti-abortion movement. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, Succinct and well put, right. Uh, Asa sent in a $2 super chat. What do you all think about The Wire? Is it propaganda? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, I haven't seen it in a long time. Uh, I've never watched it, so yeah. Oh, it's really good. It's super entertaining. Yeah, but maybe uh, it's for the best. I'm one of the few people in politics who've not probably seen it, so I'm divorced of mm -hmm. having wire brain, the wire brain. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, I watched it um, back when I was more of a normie. I was going through. Uh, I was still in grad school. It was before like the uh, the Mike Brown protests, which was really big. Um, like we were all talking about it at college. So I don't know if I would have picked up on the things then that I would now. So if I have time, I would like to rewatch it just to kind of um, 
just to see if it is copaganda. I, I think just like trying to recall, I'd say, yeah, there's a lot of elements about it that is copaganda, but I, I can't say because I need to I need to rewatch it. But um, I mean, there's honestly, a lot of great characters most, in it, though. Mo, mo, most shows that have cops in them are, are copaganda, like the entire Law oh, right. and series, even even the ones where like the cops are um are are uh clearly like doing stuff they shouldn't be like what's the chicago one chicago whatever it is and like the mm. cops will take the guy downstairs and beat them up in the in like the 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 basement or whatever like but it's always for the greater good that they're doing that for it. like mm. it's if you're doing a cop show it's it's usually copaganda like i don't know if i could Probably. think of one that isn't um, okay, so somebody in my Twitch chat recommended that we raid Jason Society. He's a chill cannabis streamer who also covers leftist politics. Who is this? Jason Society. I'll put it in our private chat. Oh, I think, a, I've, I think I've raided Jason Society. Oh, okay. I've never raided Jason. I just put um, it in our private chat. All right, Jason Society. So should we do Jason Society? or Let's what's, do Jason. What's yeah, let's do Jason. All right, cool. Let's uh, let me pull him up. Hold on, Jason underscore Society, right? Yep. <clears throat> Thanks for the recommendation, uh, DJ Dub. Oh, it says invalid username. I see it, Jason underscore Society. Oh, let me try that again. Oh, okay, there we go. It worked again. Okay. Or it worked this time, I, I should say. It. Not again. Yeah. yeah, I got it. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Let's uh oh wait, it's it's loading up. I forgot to start raid. Is yours loading up? Uh, I'm ready to go now. Uh, hold on. I got I need a minute. Not even a minute. I need five. Oh, real four. quick. Tokyo Hans. Oh Police Academy Tech Copaganda. Yeah, thank you, Tokyo Hans. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, that's it for this week, folks. Uh, enjoy uh, the raid to Jason Society, uh, and uh, we'll see you all next week, right, Mike? Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, peace. Take care, everyone.